Let's just be real. Let's just be honest. Let's just be real. Yeah, let's just be honest. Let's just be real. You're on the Virtual Entertainment Programming Network, TVEPN.com. Studios, the Slam Show. And now, your host, Slam. What's up, everyone? As we always do, we have to start off with an applause when truth, my co host, comes on. Dude, he kicks it off. That, that's, that's, it's tradition, man. That's it's how tra- it is. It's only tradition when you're on the program. Yes, sir. Isn't that the fact, Cindy? He always starts off with the applause. I think so, yeah. Or, or at least a, a rude reminder of buying pizza at 7-Eleven. Oh, <laughs> come on, man. Can that, you believe that, how, champ? How old is that story, dude? And, <laughs> and it was brought it's up. It's a legend that continues, though, man. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Before we get into that, I'd like to have my co-hosting staff and our special guests in the house introduce themselves, starting with the back end, working our way up. Hi, Cindy here. Oh, okay, right on. Uh, <laughs> Damn, Mike, it's been a while. Yeah, kind of slow there. Shoot, I, I was expecting a little bit more, man. Uh, Mike, Hill smooth, man. Glad to glad to be back. Cool, cool. This is the champ, the specialist of guests. There you go. Right. And true Philippi news. Just as simple as that. Yeah, I don't know. What, what else do you want me to add? Oh, no, no. You can keep it just as simple as Cindy's. Right. It works okay. out. I don't do anything remarkable. Uh, That's no. not yeah. nothing else to say. That means <laughs> the one that has to follow up has to be much more greater. And greater. that could be just something it's made like up. like building up some drama or something. Like some drama. Suspense or something. Some know. drama. So sp- let's go ahead and go back to what Cindy brought oh. up. <laughs> Check this out, champ. We had Truth <laughs> come onto the show on one particular Monday, and we said, hey, can you go grab a little pizza? Because one of our sponsors, there was some issues, so forth. So instead of getting a normal pizza, like from Domino's or Little Caesars. The pizza Caesars, was normal. Well, I think he had <laughs> promised, too. That's part of the story, too. He had promised Little That's Caesars. That's right. That's right. Instead of going to Little Caesars, he goes to 7-Eleven and picks up the pizza. <laughs> Big mistake. And we never, <laughs> and we were looking at each other like 7-Eleven <laughs> actually serves pizza? Oh, man. Did you know that, champ? Oh, of course I did, but I would never oh. actually know what it tastes like. <laughs> I'm smart enough to not get in, pizza from 7-Eleven. In all fairness, though, the thing about pizza, though, is like, it, when it's bad, it's still not even that bad. Oh. It's still kind of good. <laughs> but 7-Eleven. Cold, cold pizza. I wasn't there that week, so I can't speak for what this pizza actually tasted like. 7-Eleven pushes that saying all the way to the limit. <laughs> all the way. All the way I'm to alive. the alive. Look at this. Oh. Oh, but did oh, you die? Yeah, but did you die? All honesty, the all jokes aside, you know what? I want to give uh, Truth a little bit of props, though, because, I mean, he was really a trendsetter there with that one. I mean, we had never really known that. 7-Eleven serve pizza. He shows Very up, true. and he's putting us on some new things. So, you know, I mean, who knows? Maybe everyone's going to start eating pizza from 7-Eleven, <laughs> and they got to give props to, to to Truth for starting that. The sewer rat you might know? taste like pumpkin pie, but no. I don't even know. Oh, man. <laughs> when you're hungry, everything tastes fucking good. That's true. That's for sure. Especially pizza. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> hey, did, did you guys, any of you guys go to WrestleMania? No. no, I had some. I had a friend that was working. There. I have a bunch of friends who went. Same with everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody knows somebody involved with right? wrestling. Yeah. exactly. I felt same. weird for not being there though, like because I don't watch wrestling anymore, but I used to love it. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, you know I knew it was coming. I wanted to go, but not enough to actually like buy a ticket. 
Right. Then all my friends went. And I was like, damn, I should have went. <laughs> <laughs> Wrestle, WrestleMania got me late. I was I was driving. I had to go to San Francisco, mm-hmm. and then uh, what's it called? Two thirty seven got clogged up. I'm like, what's what's? Oh man, are you serious? Like it was really like I, I didn't suspect that it was gonna be like traffic. They broke the attendance was, record at Levi's. Yeah, wow. I, I woke up to a really uh, rude and raw post on my Facebook this morning from one of my good fraternity brothers, who's a, a huge Dallas Cowboy fan, saying that uh, you know we get more attendance at WrestleMania than we did at any of our Niner games this year. So that was. Kind of hurt, man. Yeah, that's yeah. a real low blow. Yeah, it's oh, a low I've been blow. there, and it's he a doesn't fact. Have, he doesn't have room to talk, though. Oh, he doesn't. No. He really doesn't. No, not at all. AT and T, that the new Cowboy Stadium. Yeah, he has no room to talk. That's yeah. a nice stadium, though. But nobody fucking goes there. It's like <laughs> it's, it's just huge. Like, just like Levi's is huge and nice. <laughs> well, it's funny because he thinks of me as kind of like his uh his Dallas Cowboys, I guess Billy Goat, if you will, because the first ever game I watched with him, mm-hmm. a Cowboys game, was the one where Romo. Uh, choked on the like PAT snap against or the field goal snap against, against the Seahawks. Seahawks. Yeah, so that was a great day. So yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I agree. So uh, he has a uh, he always wants to try to take the time anytime the Niners there you go do wrong or something just to make himself feel better. I guess oh, he's exactly. Had, he's a had troller. a lot of that in recent times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and go through all the co-hosts and our special guests and find out what was good this past week after this past show. Cindy, you are on the hot seat, the second hot seat. I know, right? Yeah. Um, I I know, I usually have like a second to think like, the fuck did I do? This? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I went to see I went to see Joe's comedy show yes. last week. Um, so I, I was pretty happy to go to that. He seemed in good spirits, um, a lot of good acts. Oh, props out to Joe. Um, I, is he still like in Hawaii? This I is Joe think Time, our co-host. He lands today or something. Or right. He goes to like a baby shower or birthday. Uh, it's always someone having a baby at his family. So yeah. It's like every other weekend. Oh, it's a birthday party. Oh, Practically. Someone's being born. Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's my son Peter. My other son Polly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean they they all did a great job and um, he um, I think he matched the door money for his uh, donations this uh, this time around for um, Heart of a Hero. Ricky's project that's that we've awesome. been following, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, I, the rest of the week was all just work, 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 and more work. There you go. And Sunday, a um, little stroll around the wineries, which was fun. I'm like, oh look, I actually have class and taste. I get to do fun shit once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so that was really nice. I got to go back back to Situi Winery, which I recommend, and Sterling Vineyard. I got to visit, and they have like a gondola ride that takes you through their tour and all. Oh that. really? So yeah, um, check it out if you get the chance. If you like wine? Did you enjoy more one more than the other, as far as between um, two? I don't know. I I liked the wines better at Situi and I liked the tour better at Sterling. Um, I don't know. I guess I was just a little bit more impressed with the craftsmanship. Um, yeah. Even though it's kind of more of like a touristy place, the wine tasted better. There okay. you go. So what do I I mean, I'm not a, a not a super aficionate of wines, but I just like this tastes good. This does not taste as good, but it's okay. I think you're <laughs> going to be at this rate. <laughs> Maybe, Aficion- yeah. <laughs> Aficionant. Yeah. How much was the tour? Uh, let's see. Um, for a tasting at Satui, it's fifteen dollars. Oh, um, okay. It's, yeah, it's not bad. You get to try out six wines from their menu, um, and it's free if you're in the military. And I know there's a bunch of Yelp check-in offers too, where it's like two for one. Things there you like go. That. So they have a lot of deals going on. And then um, there's different levels over at Sterling. We the one we did was twenty nine dollars, and it was a certain number of tastings. I want to say six as well. And uh, it goes like thirty nine, forty nine, and that's for their reserve wines and some of their, you know, top shelf stuff. There you go, love it, love it. Cool, cool. Mike Ill, what's up, man? It's been a while since you've been on the program. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> you've been on a hiatus. Yeah, man. Just uh, we sp- missed you. Yeah, I missed you too, man. Um, everything was kind of crazy with work. Um, with Safeway, and then yes, uh, I I did hear, and we then, had our talks. Yeah, and um, no and lo- you have moved on. Yeah, no longer working there, man. Um, it wasn't a safe way to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, um, it, it, it's unfortunate. I it's wanted un- to do a Thug Life with that one show where you were, like, already teetering. Yeah. And I think I may still have to. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but um, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be for the best. And uh, It always is. Uh, yeah, but trying to get unemployment's a bitch, that's for sure. Um, so... 
you know, and I told the unemployment dude, like, a hey, straight up, like, you know, I wouldn't be trying to get it if I didn't, like, I'd rather be working, so, you know, don't don't be sweating well, me on the Safeway's phone. Safeway's union, though, right? You should be able to. Uh, I was non-union. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I, I wasn't in the greatest position at the time, um, but you know what? A hey, life moves on, and uh, I've got a lot of things coming up. Uh, I have had an interview with Sleep Train today. That Ooh. went well, so uh, I have interview number two on Thursday. Good luck with that. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah. Roll that yeah. applause. Yeah, thank you. Thank Roll you. that sound drop. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, I think I could do well. You know, at least there I'll be rewarded for my upselling techniques rather than the Safeway where I wasn't. So exactly. Um, I hope they don't sleep on you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I hope you don't get hit by a train. <laughs> oh! They need to hop on your bandwagon. Oh. Train. We are on a roll, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, on top of our sarcastic game. And uh, I'm also you know, game strong. checking out some scouting. Yes. Um, you know, some scouting opportunities for uh, trying to get some high school athletes to the next level. So, okay, um, okay. You know, that's an, another kind of side hustle I'm trying to get uh, or, try, you know, trying to fit my time with. And, um, you know, semi-pro season started up. So this p- past weekend – I was doing the game for the uh, for the South Beach Outlaws that play out of Brentwood. Um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Doing That's their very interesting. Doing their <laughs> doing their PA announcing and um, getting some uh, re- some uh, interviews with some guys in front of a camera just to just to build my portfolio a little bit. And uh, did you have your suit and tie at this particular event? No, I had the uh, South Beach Outlaw colored polo. Okay. The teal polo. Um, you need to start freaking rocking that little, suit and tie look, man. Little, I was suiting. Come on, fake Justin. Dolphins. Hey, I was suited and booted today for the interview. So, uh, and you you switched up when you came on to the Slam Show. I switched up, man, in honor of uh, Warriors. You know the run, at, you know, rocking the Rick Barry to throw back. That's right. I was gonna say that looks like a very vintage font. Yeah, I mean, this is like jersey. a. <laughs> is, that, is it a Champions jersey? Uh, these are the real throwbacks right here. I mean, this is this is the, the jersey That's that like, was popping when my dad. Was, this is actually his jersey. So. Um, That's th- like these are what they, real. These are what they looked like back in the seventies. So. Wow. Um, yeah, this isn't no Mitchell and Ness. This is exactly a jersey from the <laughs> 70s. I bet you that is worth money. Yeah, so yeah. no no recreation here. So This ain't no bootleg. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so it's just been uh, kind of hectic, but glad to be back here. I yes. missed you guys. I've been thinking about you guys every Monday. We um, think about you every Monday. I've been so busy taking up these little side gigs on the weekend, doing the Olaf thing still and everything. Mm-hmm. So um, a lot of my Mondays of late have been uh, – you know, since I've been unemployed, I've been uh, spent, you know, chilling with the girlfriend and whatnot. We're still yeah, doing well. Yeah, that's good. So, um, yeah, everything's everything's going good. You need a little applause for that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> since we're actually having a little bet that, and no, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I just made that up. <laughs> it's on three weeks. Damn, I lost. <laughs> well, I'm about to defy the odds then, right? Oh, you've been. Okay. Yeah. You've been. Cool. Right on, right on. Now, on to our special guest, Kevin Pringle, a.k.a. the champ in the <laughs> house. Glad that you're on the program, brother. <laughs> what up? And how was your weekend, weekend Well, it's happenings? funny that uh, my cohort here mentioned the semi-pro football because I was engaged in semi-pro gridiron combat on Saturday mm. with my team, the Richmond War Angels, and we will be seeing the South Bay Outlaws very soon. Oh, okay. and I wonder if you guys are listening. If you guys are listening... <laughs> You're going to be made part of my highlight reel for oh. Warriors TV. <laughs> it's going to oh. happen. So, yeah, I'm a chief propagandist in the league. Right. Okay. I take uh, our film every week and I make it look like we kick the shit out of our enemies no matter who they were, no matter what happened to the game. <laughs> and I'm going to need all those skills this weekend because we lost. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> Who'd you guys play? We played the Solano Chiefs. Okay. They're, they were 0-2. We were 2-0. And uh, we let the Richmond come out a little too much, and we fell apart and, you know, beat ourselves. Yeah, that's that's what happened in the Outlaws game, too. It got kind of chippy between them and the Islanders, and I think they shot themselves in the foot, South Beach, with a couple of uh, – they, they earned their nickname that they go by Mouth, Mouth Beach. Beach. Yeah, and they, yeah. they sure they sure talked the talk a little bit too much of it, man. There's a lot of – I mean, like- they could change their colors and change their city name all they want. I still know that they're the damn Antioch Outlaws or whatever. <laughs> 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 so it's all good. Yeah. No, but yeah, I played semi-pro football. Mm-hmm. That's actually my first game back since winning the championship in okay. 2011. What position do you play? I'm a left guard, offensive okay. line. I played a little left tackle too. Right and on. So um, it was my first time out. So I feel like I got in a car accident. But um, <laughs> it's good. It's good to get active because I hate working out, but I love playing football. So. And then really quickly, man, uh, I know we probably – save this for later but i'll ask you another question later depending but uh how'd you get the nickname champ man i got you know that's what my friends always used to call me too i got the tattoo that that says uh don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion 
So well, uh, it actually started because I had this epiphany of starting sports talk, and then my whole angle was I'm the champ of sports talk. Mm. Okay. So I was the champ of sports talk for a while, and then uh, just became the champ in life. And then I just <laughs> you know, okay. And when we won the Love championship, the <laughs> when we uh, won the championship in 2011, you know, it took on a little more meaning for me. Sure. And uh, when I was growing up and a little bit closer to ignorance. I was known as K9, which is, you know, a little bit more of a streeter name, which I'd like to distance myself from. And uh, just call me Champ. Okay. It's a lot better. Right there on. You, go. you can even call me Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> we got permission, ladies and gentlemen. Right on, right on. Truth, you're back as well. Yeah, what's up? What's up? Uh, I know you were pretty busy. Talk about your past week. I mean, just covering a bunch of stuff for, for the newspaper. Um, uh, I had to cover, like, this... VTA, you know, the Valley Transit thing. And mm-hmm. I'm, I was covering this, like, hotel press conference. Like, I had a bunch of press conferences uh, this week. And yesterday, um, like, as I alluded to earlier, I, that I was, I had to go to San Francisco. And I had to interview Miss National Asia. Um, okay, okay. And, Sounds and rough. You had to, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Dang it, man. So hard. But anywho. Uh, what, what, uh, what, what nation is Asia? Huh? When they, oh, it's National Asia. It's basically as a beauty pageant uh, queen. And uh, she was just doing a photo shoot, and I was invited just to go there. And, Which uh, country did she hail from, though? Uh, Philippines. Oh, okay, she's right she's on. Filipina. Okay, Philippines, get yeah, it done. She's rocking, yeah, but they're all, you know, the, all the girls from the pageant are from here, so it's like a national, you know, Asian pageant. So. Right, right. I know, but what I'm saying is they represented the Philippines won out, though. They beat the Chinese, the Japanese, <laughs> the Koreans, so right on, man. Yeah, so, yeah, I guess you could put it that way. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I was just interviewing her and stuff, and then, Made a video on uh, Instagram. Check it out. Truth underscore P News. So, uh, Sounds exciting. What about yeah. your boy? News. N- your yeah. boy uh, Nonito got yeah. a win recently, and, right? Yeah, Nonito got his comeback win. Yeah. Um, second round knockout. It was. It was. It was just. It was just. It was like a. It was a punching bag versus Donero. I mean, it wasn't fair, dude. What ring is Pacquiao gonna get knocked out in? Though that's the real question. <laughs> Whoa! We gotta put the brakes on that. Knockout Pacquiao? I mean, man, come it, on, man. I mean, a lot. I mean, people have been saying that you know Mayweather can't knock out Pacquiao because Mayweather doesn't really have any punching power, knockout punching power. But you know, I've been thinking. I'm like, he's, Pacquiao, he's, he's training. He's training. Pacquiao with got his slept. Dad. He's he's been training with his dad. You know, Mayweather Senior. Mayweather Senior is kind of an offensive trainer compared to Roger Mayweather. So. I mean, and as I alluded to, uh, as I alluded to when my last time I was here in the show, mm-hmm. that you know Mayweather, you know, allegedly could be ha- could have some Pacquiao sparring tapes in his possession. So, yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, so he definitely does. So, de- so definitely, like, you know, Mayweather has you know already crafted the perfect game plan for Pacquiao, and it's up to Pacquiao to just basically, you know, kind of throw a hail mary, I guess, yeah. and land yeah. like a clean shot all the karaoke and all <laughs> of the bay area is not going to help back yeah, in that fight <laughs> oh my but, goodness you know but at any at the same time you know it's a puncher's chance you know, right you know well, like, ha- what happened to broner you know he could be like the one he's very good <clears throat> and defensively and then just get one one hit you're 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 shocked the whole fight and i don't care what it is we're still talking the sport of boxing you never know i, I know oh, i know sure. i know people don't want to say it's fixed but you never know what could happen uh when it comes down i think it's going to come i don't think both are, are going to knock each other out. I think it's going to go to a decision, and you never know. The judges might want to. It's a decision. Yeah, they might want to make it. I don't know. They might want to give it to to nah, Manny and try to stage a, a rematch. You know, if it was close They're enough for a decision. In the city of Las Vegas, Mayweather's hometown. Man, and let's, never and know. May, let's, and Mayweather's promotions. I mean, I know All you right. want the Thrilla in Manila part two, but that's not fair either. Well, check this out, guys. The fight is still a little ways off. A <laughs> lot of things could happen, whether it's some crazy controversy or some... Only a month away, man. Some crazy drug test fail. Now we can't have it. So we're going to have the show Injury. where we're going to have our deepest predictions and probably have everyone that's here tonight back on sure. right before May May 2nd. May 2nd. May 2nd. Oh, yeah. I might be in Vegas for that thing already. Yeah, I'll, and we'll I, I'll, be, I'll be out in Florida. All right. Well, we're gonna have we'll to see. get your predictions <laughs> before the, uh, that that be the week before. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier, than I'll that. tweet you. Exactly. Exactly. Right <laughs> on. Truth. Cool. Cool. All right. As before mentioned, we don't have Joe Time and Sage. They are both out on assignment, so hopefully they'll be back next week. As far as my past week, gosh, it was just all gigs. Thursday, Friday, Saturday at Farrington's on Thursday in Pleasant Hill. 
Blondie's over in Vacaville Friday. I had to do a little emergency gig over there and Redux Lounge in Walnut Creek. I'd like to say a special thanks to everyone involved at all three venues. Hospitality-wise, the staff is always off the hook. Too many names to mention. So, But, yeah, that's basically my weekend in a nutshell. And as we always do, we do a quick review of last week's guests. And that was Brooke Mayo and MMA fighter Brooke Mayo along with Lana of Lana's Egg Whites. I have a little quick video of her in action. And Cindy, uh, because you are the only one from last <laughs> week, that's <laughs> that was witnessing her presence here in the studio. Great guest, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, yeah. Very gracious, very bright, um, you know, very focused. Um, always great to have Lana back in the studio, too. Um, she's really really hands-on when it comes to the athletes that she covers mm -hmm. um you know always really involved not just a name on the shorts you know she's she's right there every ringside every fitness competition every expo she's there right very very invested and i i see a lot of great things going to come out of brooke she's She's on a roll. She's on a hot streak. She's very passionate. And she just won this past Saturday. Yeah, she just she was talking about that. You know, she was um, nervous about making weight and everything, and then she just she just blew it out of the water. Yep. <laughs> and did just fine. So. <laughs> did anyone ask her questions about uh, Ronda Rousey and just kind of the career she's had? Um, we did. We because yeah. she she joked about wanting to fight her, and I said, well, what, you know, what would your strategy be? And and she said, well, I'll try to survive. And then it, the <laughs> light bulb the light bulb went off like that's been everybody's strategy <laughs> and it hasn't worked. And th I think that kind of got the gears turning for her. But I, I think um, she didn't fight to survive. <laughs> I mean. Exactly. Exactly. That's what everybody's just kind of been trying to do that gets in the ring instead of like having a real game plan. Mm -hmm. And I think I think anybody that goes up against her has to have like, you know, like tree stumps for legs so that they can't be like twirled around like a major at baton that's right <laughs> you know because <laughs> everybody that tries to like bounce around too much on their feet just gets tossed because she just uses their momentum so i think she needs to fight somebody that's a a brick wall essentially Cyborg. i agree <laughs> cyborg a brick wall a brick wall that punches really hard right. yeah. <laughs> and can't be picked up cyborg <laughs> yeah make a good fight yeah if they fight and she just signed on with the ufc right uh not even a few days ago yeah Right on, congrats. So, but she's, mm -hmm. she's 145, so eh, we'll see. We'll see yep. where that goes. I would like to see that. Yep, yep. So if you guys missed that episode with Brooke Mayo and Lana of Lana's Egg Whites, be sure to check out that replay as well as other archives at tvepn.com or the slamshow.tv or .com. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break and be back with the topic segment sponsored by Dickies from Pinole and Pleasant Hill. Stay tuned here on The Slam Show. Yeah, baby. If you're suffering from chronic pain, migraine headaches, or any other health issues, it might be your back telling you it's time for an adjustment. Come check out the new Health Chiropractic Center in Concord. We restore the curvatures of the spine to bring you back to good health and wellness. Our specialists will provide a full examination and x-rays for free. Just mention The Slam Show. Call now for an appointment at 925-759-9722 or online at thenewhealthcc.com. In order to transform your health, you have to try something new. The New Health Chiropractic Center. Weekends you want to spend with family, friends, doing stuff that you love. You don't want to spend weekends looking for a new car, burning through weekend after weekend on the hunt. Instead, you got to check True Car and the True Car mobile app. In five minutes, True Car's app not only lets you build the car that you want, it tells you what others paid for it and lets you lock in guaranteed savings, usually over three grand less than MSRP. So get your weekends back at the car you want without stressing over overpaying. Save time, save money, and never overpay. Download the True Car app today. What are you doing? I'm turning this hedge into a dolphin-shaped topiary. But this house isn't yours. In fact, I just showed it to you. Oh, I'm going to buy it. Softly confident. Well, I am an excellent candidate for a home loan. I pulled an 809 FICO score at Experian.com, so getting a mortgage is merely a formality. What do you think I should do with this other hedge? 
a giraffe, and get your credit swagger on. Become a member of Experian Credit Tracker and find out your FICO score powered by Experian. FICO scores are used in 90% of credit decisions. I'm a mid-century architectural wonder, a house made entirely of glass. So you can imagine my fright when giant pieces of hail started falling from the sky. Did I mention I'm made entirely of glass? Everyone was running here, running there, trying to get out of the house, but what am I to do? I am the house. Your house can't protect itself. That's why the Geico Insurance Agency helps make it easy to switch and save on homeowner's insurance. You could save even more when you combine your homeowners with an existing auto insurance policy. Call Geico, go to geico.com, or visit your local office. Are you living with pain? So was Lisa, a brave Marine wounded in Iraq. After surviving an explosion, I was on horrible painkillers. I tried one-hour pain relief, and now I'm pain-free all day without dangerous side effects. And it works in less than one hour. Try it free for one week and pay only the shipping with no automatic shipments. Call 800-500-1810 right now or visit onehourpainrelief.com. That's 800-500-1810. 800-500-1810. Who did you let down today? If you're drinking too much or doing too many drugs, you probably let a whole bunch of people down. And I bet you're not sleeping very well either. Well, we can help you at the Detox Hotline. Let us be your recovery concierge. And don't think this is just another treatment ad. I promise you, we are different. We'll put you in a luxury-like getaway where our painless detox process will fix your addiction problem. And in no time at all, you'll get your life and your sleep back. Painless Detox is here, and our recovery concierge service will work with your insurance company to maximize your coverage. We are different. Let us help you break your addiction to drugs and alcohol before it's too late. Take five minutes of your time and call right now. I promise it will change your life. 800-885-2600. 800-885-2600. Geico Motorcycle presents Reflections from the Road. Let me tell you, the road is a much more relaxing place since I switched to Geico Motorcycle Insurance and started saving money. With that taken care of, now I can think about deep, important things. Like how come it's a pair of pants when there's only one of them? A real brain teaser. But hey, at least saving money with Geico Motorcycle is as easy as pie. What does that mean, anyway? Geico Motorcycle Insurance. See how much you could save. Do you need working capital for your business? Don't wait months for the bank approval. Get the cash you need today at businessloanstoday.com. Even if you've been turned down from a local bank, at businessloanstoday.com, we provide alternative financing to retailers, restaurants, hotels, contractors, auto mechanics, and hundreds of other businesses. Unlike banks, our unique financing services are flexible with repayment plans tailored to meet your needs. There's no collateral required, and loans are not based on your personal credit score. The the only requirement is that you've been in business at least one year and have sales of over $20,000 per month. Getting the cash your business needs is easy. Just fill out our simple application and we'll customize your financing to fit your needs. Then, within 24 hours after approval, your funds are available up to $250,000. Thousands of business owners are turning to alternative financing instead of standard banks. The application only takes a few minutes, so call Business Loans today at 800-669-9801 and see what you qualify for. That's 800 800- 669-9801 800-669-9801 Yes, welcome everyone to the Slam Show and this is the topic segment sponsored by Dickies out of Pleasant Hill. Special thanks to Matt and Sherry. Yes, thank you guys for always hooking it up. The food was oh man, it was good. Yeah, was and you so mistaken it for another one of our sponsors. How dare you? <laughs> hey man, you got you guys are the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> All you sponsors, you guys are great. There you go. There yeah, you Dickies, go. man, the rolls are just... I love those rolls, man. They're on fleek. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Gotta use that term. Uh, I will not... No I, you'll way. never hear me say fleek or thought, except for now, but I will <laughs> never say that again. Those terms hey, are a, so... A, they need to go. Hey, I'm gonna tell you this. Yeah, if you, if you, What's this role if coming you, to? If you hashtag the term on fleek, you'll get additional likes on Instagram. Uh, here we oh go again. My, I you'll can't. Did you hear that, Kevin? You'll that. get likes. From, That's that generation from gap showing stupid, its ugly yeah, face. Right? No, you'll get likes from stupid high schoolers or from the <laughs> bot accounts, like hey, the the robot ones, spam. the spam ones. Yeah, and, exactly. And people who use that hashtag, which is about a million millions of people. So, I mean, if you want, I mean. <laughs> I, I'm a, I, I, I like social media, you know what I'm saying? It's quality I'm a, over quantity, these, though. Yeah, it's these kids, they don't like care anymore about how, quality. It, <laughs> do you want, well, do you want a lot of shitheads looking at your profile, or do you want the right people looking at your profile? Whoa. Oh, well, you, you know, if my if my target demographic is a bunch of, the you know, <laughs> of teenagers and, you know, or 
know the most views for People my you know my free. content. And t- tell the truth, followers are followers, right? <laughs> It hey, don't matter. Follow for follow, but I'm just I am just saying, man. From a social social marketing standpoint, which I I do a lot of social marketing, you know. Okay. You know, and it, the it, it's good. It's good to get views, man. <laughs> and the chat room does agree with you, truth. Yeah. Views are views, followers are followers, mm-hmm. yeah. regardless if they're creepy yeah. or bots. Right. <laughs> I, I'll take them. Follow me, truth if underscore it's a generated P-news. spam account, it's not a real person looking at your stuff. Will you, will you tell them? <laughs> it's like, okay, let me let me date myself oh, for man. a minute, but remember MySpace where you'd get these Whoa! messages? You get That's these messages <laughs> where it's like, I'm saving up for an iPod. Yeah. Watch champ. my videos. Hey, champ, like, remember oh, Mixture and Friendster? Oh, Friendster. Friendster. Oh, that hits you in the gut right there. Huh? Like Friendster's the real one. <laughs> hey, do you have Friendster? Just be friends. Hey, I was Not one the, of the first people on MySpace, so. Me real too. Talk. Yeah. Uh, no, when MySpace first came out, it was the greatest thing I've oh, ever it was seen so in my dumb. life. <laughs> and I was in college right when it first came out too, like my uh, first year of college. Did, oh. How did you change your? How did you change your background? How did you do that? Teach me, no, man, babe. <laughs> quickly. Right, people pimp out their page. Yeah, with all the yeah. Graphics. And that just slowed everything down when you have the avatars <laughs> that and chips. That bastardized it. <laughs> you oh have dial-up goodness. connection. You're like, I can't view your page, man. That's right. Background that was... music and all that. Yeah, shit. yeah you used to have. You could put a playlist of songs on yours, like. Remember, what was it, the top eight or something like that? Yeah, yeah. How come I'm not in your top eight? <laughs> and how come I can't get that dude Tom off my top eight? <laughs> yeah, I would delete, delete him, and then he'd just pop right yeah. back up in my I friends. Like, exactly, <laughs> and it's that same photo where he's like, <laughs> hey, Tom is smart, though. I remember Tom sold Tom's MySpace, so and at the time I was like, man, you're hella stupid. <laughs> no, I'm hella stupid. Because <laughs> he's worth money. That's yeah. right. Some people make the right power moves at the right time. Yeah, for real. Sometimes I still check out my old MySpace just to look at the pics. <laughs> Are you serious? I put on some... Yeah, dude. That was it was What's it under? Michael Smith, so there's like 50 million that pop yeah. up? Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know, man. Just search... Uh... <laughs> Search mksmith06 at yahoo.com. There's probably, <laughs> there's probably 20 of those. Oh, my goodness. Right on. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and jump into our first topic. And as we have Mike Ill in the perfect attire Dubs. for what we're going to talk about, the Golden State Warriors are currently 60-13 and 13 with nine games left on the schedule. Best record in the league. Now, what's more significant at this point through 73 games in the history of the NBA, nine out of the 12 teams that have this winning percentage, these wins, go on to the championship. That's just highly favoring the Golden State Warriors right now, especially with so many games still remaining. This is huge, guys. Yep. I have little, I have the video of Steph Curry doing his magic. He, we can't even stop talking about this gentleman. He, is, he just is like a freaking magician. On the court, doesn't even have to look, just throws it up there, goes in, has a percentage of over 50%. He's Who a beast. Does? It's amazing. Yep. Yep. Right now, this is it. The Golden State Warriors, barring any major catastrophe injury-wise, and we know to whom, which is the center, Bogut. If he stays healthy, <laughs> that's his nickname, right? <laughs> it should be the championship raised at the end. Now, what's going to go ahead and derail this? Who knows? I want Mike Hill, give your personal opinion. Are they on course for the trophy to be raised right now? Definitely. Go for it. Definitely. I mean, they they uh, started off by catching the league on storm. What they go like uh, their first nine in a row or twelve in a row before they finally lost a game and. Uh, and so, the, so you know, I've always believed in the wire-to-wire teams, although I saw a Giants team back in, what, 2001 that went wire-to-wire and couldn't get it done. They lost in the first round to the Marlins, I believe. Let's but, stick with the association. But, uh, yeah, yeah. B- <laughs> back, back to the association. You know, I, you know what? Um, I think basketball is the only sport where, and, and I've, you know, you can people say this all the time, but it's the truth, is that um, it's the only sport where once these teams get into playoffs – uh, you can't sugarcoat anything. The likelihood of, you know, what what the Warriors did do back in the we believe Warriors of upsetting the Mavericks. That's really, 2007. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a that's, once a, in, that's a once in a blue moon type of deal. You know what I'm saying? You don't really see uh, eight seeds or low seeds rise up. Usually, the teams that showed their medal throughout the season in a best of seven series, and it's best of seven all the way out for four rounds. Remember the best um, of fives back in the day? Yeah, remember it used to be five in the first round, then seven, seven. Yeah. Um, but now it's all sevens, and I, I just think that, you know, a team may get lucky and maybe take one game from them, but uh, 
you know, if they if they do end up beating the Hawks for the best record in the entire NBA, uh, there's no better place to play than at Oracle. And mm. having that having that hometown crowd uh, for Roracle. for each series, yeah, the Oracle. Uh, I think it's just in their favor. And this is this is the deepest Warriors team we've ever seen. Maybe deeper than the team that you know I'm rocking the jersey of with Rick Barry and and uh, that's you know, the, the championship. The, yeah, the 74-75 yeah. team with uh, Al Adels and Nate Thurman. And um, but I just think that. This team is, is way deep. I mean, you, you look at their bench players, and you can put them on teams as starters. When you're talking about Iguodala still has game, David Lee has game. Uh, Livingston. Livingston, you got to love Mo Buckets. Yeah. I don't know if he starts on every team, but he's he's worthy of, uh, of his minutes. Um, Leandro Barbosa has been playing huge off the bench. Uh, so, I mean, really, Draymond everyone's – every, yeah, Well, Draymond's in the starting lineup. I mean – you know, uh, it's just prime. It's yeah, very it, prime. It's, it's their time. I mean, they've done it all year. Um, you know, Don't Steph Curry's joke. Steph Curry's yeah. <laughs> Steph Curry's elevated his game to the next level. I mean, he's he's right under this is it. LeBron as far as best players in the game right now. Um, and maybe he might even be better than LeBron. I don't know. Uh, I mean, he's definitely the best pure shooter. But uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> you caught Truth's attention. But uh, skill sets. Yeah. No, definitely different skill sets, different body types, but. Uh, but what he's been able to do just all around, leading the team, carrying himself as a professional, um, you know, we saw it in the All-Star game, the way he dominated that three-point shootout, um, you know, and then, and then I left out Clay Thompson, you know what Clay's been doing. So, uh, yeah, no, this is, everything is, like you said, it's been primed to say that this is going to be their year, um, and I don't, I don't really see anything knocking it off, barring, you know, any injuries and <laughs> There you go. <laughs> hey, there's to, to, to you're gonna have to. Team. Yeah, you're gonna yeah, have yeah. to. And I don't know what I don't know what else to say. They just have to stay healthy. A, yeah. Now well, it's all about matchups too. I mean, wait. Let me, let me well, because you are a Houston Rockets fan, yeah, yeah. so you're going to go <laughs> against the grain. Yeah. But see, but that's the thing, though. Really quick, truth before I, before you speak is just. I mean, this is you know normally the Warriors have been known for being run and gun for so many years now, yeah. and now they could slow it down. They could play a, a, a half court game. So this is the you know first Warriors team we've seen in a long while. Where matchup wise, that's why I cut you off really quick. Matchup wise, I think we can match up with anybody depending on whatever we could we could put a lineup out there that could play against anybody in the league. Yeah. Agreed. True. It's true. Agreed. But you know maybe like a big able body team like they beat Memphis like they beat them recently, but they. You know they could give them some problems, like if they see them in the finals, and especially if you're they gonna, could. if you're playing them in a seven game, you have to see these guys over and over and over. But the I mean, first game they they barely lost to Memphis, and that was without Bogut. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't know. I think with Bogut, I, there's no one really that scares me on Memphis. I think Gasol's a beast, and I, Conley stepped his game up this year. But Zach I, Randolph, Randolph, ben Randolph. Hey, Zebo's old though, man. Yeah, but Zebo, man, he, Zebo. Still, he could still bang in there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But I'm just saying like. No, it's it's gonna be it, uh, the playoffs are a different beast because you're not seeing the same team. I mean, you're seeing different teams, and they have, they they're not adjusted to your strategy. But if you're constantly playing these teams over and over, like for me, I still, I mean, I I do not want to see the Spurs. I don't want to be playing the Spurs in the playoffs. Like these, oh, right, these right, crafty right. veterans are in there. They could take you out. They like, and that was Pop- actually my preseason pick. And, was and the, Spurs. the Popovich could you? He, he'll dissect you, man. So I, do, I mean, I mean like. I mean, you're sure the Warriors are the favorite and, you know, the most likely going to win. But, you know, I wouldn't say it's a sure, like, easy, easy money. Would you, know? you put? Would you bet on it right now that they're going to win the chip? I'm not going to bet money, but <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not a, I'm not really a betting man. But I'm okay, just saying it's, it's not pizza. easy breezy. <laughs> the, only team out, pizza? <laughs> the only team out there, out there that's kind of scary is, uh, is the Cleveland Cavaliers because, granted, they play in the East, but, uh, you know, the Warriors went there about a month ago with, the, with their full squad. And uh, the Cavs handled them pretty well. I mean, Cavs have made a lot of additions throughout the season with some trades, and they are a deadly team. Make, make no mistake about it. They just don't have a coach, but uh, <laughs> but they're a deadly team. And as long as they can put the whole Kevin Love beef that they've got going on <laughs> with him and James aside, they're 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 really the only team. I think I picked them because Joe picked the Warriors, so I had to go with something else. I didn't want to just piggyback off of Joe, but That's I think right. that'd be the only team I would maybe uh, say could could knock them out would be would be the Cleveland Cavs, uh, just because the last time they played, uh, Cavs handled them pretty convincingly, um, and that was with their full squad. Champ, what do you think of all of this? I try not to. <laughs> no, this has been the Warriors' year. Yeah. I mean, anyone who grew up around here knows that the Warriors have sucked a lot more than they haven't, and uh, <laughs> we've kind of watched them come out of that that absolute depths of loserness 
<laughs> to be competitive. All those horrible draft picks. Yeah, I mean, it's oh, terrible. Dunleavy. Terrible draft picks. Lots of Europe in How'd there. How'd you pronounce his name? Dunleavy. Okay, I thought you said something else. Okay. Dunleavy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like, they just ha- they've always underachieved, and the past couple years, it's been almost, you know, like in NBA, there's really only like three or four contenders in a year. Yeah. Like, now they're a legit contender, yep. and it's theirs to lose. Mm-hmm. Whether they do it, it's a whole other story and injuries have plagued the Warriors, you know, glass ankles, Curry. You know, if uh, Bogut can't stay healthy, that's going to be a problem. Like, we need them all the way. So if nothing changes, like we've already said, yeah, it's theirs to lose. There you go. And I think the biggest difference is just uh, we were talking about it pre, pre-show, pre but just the coaching staff and, and, and uh, you know, Steve Kerr, his bright mind, you know, people were wondering, could it work out? You know? Yeah, a rookie coach. Cause especially because Mark Jackson was able to take him to the playoffs and have success. You know, could they, you know, by letting him go, could, would it would it still be success and spend better than, than anyone would have ever imagined? And Amazing. He just has a great staff. You know, Alvin Gentry uh, knows how to handle an offense from Phoenix Suns. Luke Walton, uh, you know, has won a couple championships with the Lakers back in his day. And then, uh, you yeah, know, he rode that bandwagon, didn't he? Yeah. Walton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he did. He did. You know, Coach Adams, a uh, great defensive. And then yeah. you know, the, the front office staff is just, you know, when you have minds of Jerry West, one of the great play, you know, the logo, uh, you know, making making differences. Bob Myers has made all the right moves. You know, they could have traded for uh, – for Truce Boy Dwight, and they they resisted on <laughs> no. that. Uh, there was a time when they really could have had him, and, and you know Dwight kind of turned the Warriors down, and the hey. Warriors, in the same sense, turned him down, and it was the greatest thing. And and they you know everyone was speculating <laughs> that trade for Kevin Love, and they didn't get him. Remember that bullshit? Yeah, Clay yeah. Thompson for Kevin Love bullshit. Yeah, so no one's talking about that, that now. Once <laughs> yeah. they get that Bayfront Arena, everyone's gonna come. Play exactly, you know, oh, that's yeah. it. Then 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 they'll be the premier destination. The only thing that'll hold them back is what holds a lot of uh, pros coming out here is just the California taxes but other than that man they play yeah. in at 69th street village in oakland <laughs> they stay in the, the it yep <laughs> yep it. yep <laughs> Be nice about it. the heart of it all right cindy close this out um all i gotta say is i mean they've, they've gotten pretty far like the last couple seasons just from my bar going observations because i don't <laughs> follow basketball but if it's on then oh local team's doing good they're due but yeah um uh, it's nice to see local teams do really well. All I gotta say is just don't choke. You okay. know, the last couple times it's just Man. been like they get so far and then eh, something. Like the know, sharks. No choke artists. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you know, yep. more power to them. Good luck. <laughs> last year, I always wonder what could have happened though. If you if they had Bogut, I think they definitely would have beat the Clippers in that first round matchup. Yeah. Um, did you pick the Clippers on your preseason? Uh, I did. Yeah, I see, did. So. I mean, they're playing hot ball right now. Yeah, you never with know. The return of Blake. You never know. But, uh, but I don't know, man. I just think they could have beaten them last year with with a healthy Bogut, and you know, and then all that stuff kind of happened with uh, everything surrounding the the Clippers and the whole racist thing. And I don't know, you know. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> TMZ. Yep. But Distractions but cannot have them. Yeah. Before before you, before you change subject, I just want to add one little. Quote. Yeah. Go ahead. James Harden for MVP. Okay. Uh, then, then, then now we can change. <laughs> do we have a, do do we have a, do we have a <laughs> sound effect? <laughs> Red Nation. There you go. Why okay. are you laughing, man? Pick up the fart gun. Get the fart gun. <laughs> Why are you laughing? He definitely deserves to be in the MVP conversation. Oh, my goodness. Here we go. We have to I'm have a, I'm a Rockets guy. Like I said, if anything, MVP, most valuable beard. Other than that, no. Oh, oh hey, really? Did, did you guys hear about this whole StubHub is suing the Warriors because of the whole monopoly with Ticketmaster? Did you hear, hear about that? I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, apparently Ticketmaster and the Warriors have this whole thing, especially with tickets being so hard to get and the playoffs coming. They're just doing some, like, real, hey, if you're going to go ahead and sell tickets, you got to resell your tickets through Ticketmaster and can't do it through StubHub. Well, so StubHub is suing the Warriors well, right now. StubHub. Well, that's where that's where uh, sponsorships come into play. Ticketmaster is a huge yeah, sponsor of the Warriors, so you can't really, if you're StubHub, you can't be too mad. I mean, StubHub's greedy. That man. that'd be like <laughs> that'd be like if uh, Safeway came in and said, "Oh, well, you know." Uh, no, you did. The, the Warriors, Safeway. the Warriors, <laughs> well, the Warriors said, "We can't buy. Uh, you can't buy groceries here for Warriors." Well, they they have extreme partnerships with Lucky. You know what I'm saying? But so you it's know like, what though? They do have a point. I just thought about it because yeah. once you buy something, mm-hmm. you've paid for those. Goods, like, yeah, they can't dictate where you're whatever. gonna resell it, right? Right, they yeah. can't say, Well, if you're gonna resell it, you have to go through us. Well, so you, there you go. That's StubHub saying, Hey, we want a little piece of this playoff pie. If there's gonna be a lot of money being made, man, the rich get richer, man. There you go. 
There you StubHub, go. man. Right. I'm just anti-StubHub right now. from that? Yeah, <laughs> like. StubHub. I'm, I'm anti-StubHub. I went to that uh, that Winter Classic and bought a parking pass off of StubHub. And then uh, I show up to the Levi's. And the, the lot that we got it for was the one right next to the stadium, the Primo lot. And they were already sold out. How could they be sold out? I bought a ticket for that lot. What? And I had to park in a different lot, man. That's so Jay whack. York hates the fans. Peeved, man. Peeved. There we whack. go. There you go. Oh. Hate so. Them. Getting back to the Warriors, stay on course, and that trophy should be raised. Rockets. Go Dubs. Rockets, yes. stay on course. Dubs. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, Truth. We're going to mute your mic. <laughs> All right, guys. That Euro step, though. <laughs> yeah, untruth. <laughs> Best Euro step in the game. Let's moving, go. On, moving on to our next topic, the final topic. Last week, activist rapper, artist, Immortal Technique, was arrested for attacking and robbing vendors along with his entourage outside of his sold-out concert. More like illegal technique. <laughs> <laughs> this happened over in Orange County when, before oh, the concert happened, saw two vendors selling his trademark T-shirts. He approached the vendors and tried to get information on the sales and trying to work something out. An altercation occurred and cops responded and so forth. He was arrested, but not until after he performed at the concert. Now, there's a few things I want to talk about with this. First off, I, I've been supporting Immortal Technique and all what he believes. He was on Alex Jones. He's on all these talk shows talking about certain changes with society and Illuminati and stuff like that. I just dig him. He's just cool like that. And his music, it's decent, but not freaking stark raving about it. So this incident was very interesting because I can relate to that, where... In the past, and you could relate to this too, champ, where oh, you would sure. be around like the flea market or down at the mall, and you'll see someone selling CDs. Your shit. And <laughs> you're like, holy shit. And that did happen to me. And I approached the guy, and I said, hey, we could do two things. We could either call the police right now, or you give me all the CDs and the profits that you earn from this. And I've confronted individuals many times and they without a second once i show that oh this is slam and sam oh sh it's all your shit take it that's it end of story yeah it's situational though i mean at the end of the day you can't stop it man you you just can't. yeah yeah you, well you could at least limit that opportunity that you can control i mean at that you moment. don't have to bend over and just say hey beat them up party but at the same at the end of the day <laughs> like how much energy do you want to spend on that like when i was in the business like we would find people who were putting up our stuff without our permission, and you know, it would rile us up really good, and we'd try to get it down, but it's such a it's a futile battle. Well, it, it's a person-to-person -person sort of situation. Well, this is the thing. Like, with Immortal Technique, like, you can't rob it. Like, if you're going to be the businessman of trademarks and trademark infringement and even that That's kind of conversation— like yeah yeah there is a certain <laughs> you don't go rob them then you yeah. go through the law and you handle it and it's yeah. not going to get handled because it's too much of a small incident for the law to even like make a difference well check this out it was so small according to the police that they let immortal technique perform at the concert right after the incident then arrested him after yeah and but check that out he's okay. in he's in orange county that's like the top um you know per capita income place in america like they're not tolerating your tomfoolery. No. Oh. Okay, a couple things here. Like Language. ten, ten wrongs don't make a right. Um, okay, these people, these people. Okay, whatever. They're selling bootleg merchandise. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no, that's that's not right to do. Whatever. You see it outside the ballpark. You see it outside concerts. You see it all the time. Him, you know, getting in an altercation and robbing them. That's not right either. Like he said, you know, handle it legally, handle it through the law, investigate, whatever you need to do. Um, getting arrested and not even being taken in, getting to go to work, uh, that's not right either. That isn't. That <laughs> so isn't. Many, like, so many wrongs in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Like, it's yeah, just piling on, like, wrong thing on top of wrong thing on top of wrong thing, and nobody's getting any accountability right. for the shitty things they're doing. Well, check this out. One of the officers <laughs> came out and stated that the <laughs> reason why they let... <laughs> They let Immortal Technique perform was if they were going to cancel the concert, that that was going to rile up another the, issue in terms promoters. of the people that pay to see them. It's like, okay, what the hell happened? So they would have had to yeah, deal I with that, that problem. But no one's no one is above the law. Exactly. Well, that's, that's that's. Well, he wasn't above the law. That's shady, though. They just didn't implement the law at that very instant. They said, okay, you go do your four songs that anyone cares about. <laughs> and when you get when you get off the stage, we're gonna arrest you. Like, uh, right, right. You need bail money anyways. And yeah, you don't yeah. Have to give back you're gonna need that. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna need that check B. 
<laughs> yeah, it's gonna go right into our pockets. Well, I'll take uh, I'll take True's first nickname of illegal technique, and I'll just I'll just I'll just drop the T from his and say immoral technique. On oh, this. On this, man, man, we are just a wise bunch here on yeah, the Slam man. Show tonight. Why? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean honestly, I look at it this way, like. How much money are them vendors really making off, dude? Like, if if yeah. like I don't know immortal technique, but if I was that if I was that confident in my rap game, which I would be if I was him, oh, I'd sure. be like, bro, I'm gonna make back whatever they're selling and then some in the rest of my future life. There's no need for me to try to punk these cats, which are probably uh, they probably had you know half of what the entourage he had with him. You know what I'm saying? And it's just I don't know, man. Like yeah. that's just like bullying kind of. Like the only place you know that saying? works like, is in Houston, Texas, and if you're Jay Prince. You heard that, True? Oh, 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 oh it's Prince. happened. <laughs> Jay it's, Prince. It's happened in real life. Yeah. What Bootleggers. Happened oh. Jay Prince is like the boss of Houston, undisputed, unquestionable. I thought it was Paul Wall. <laughs> <laughs> rap, rap a lot records. But there are people who are bootlegging his record label's stuff in, yeah. in the street, and he sent out his goons who would go and talk to these people and say, hey, like, you can't sell my stuff. And there was nothing else that needed to be said. They like that? Packed, yeah, yeah, like... But you know that's a whole other angle. Yeah, <laughs> Jay Prince is like mafia. Like, yeah, Mortal Technique is just a rapper. And I know it's not too much of a comparison, but it's kind of similar. I mean, I guess it relates to one of our favorite teams, the Niners. You know, it's the same thing as you know, oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. like you know, Alden Smith still getting to play after it came out that he was arrested. You know what I'm saying? They still but let. I know that's the champ's boy. That's yeah, <laughs> you know, no, I love Alden too. I love him dearly. But I, I party at his house. That's <laughs> different. If you get arrested. And then you're out on bail before, I mean, it's just like doing any other job. If you're any other private citizen, anybody else, you get arrested for something and you bail yourself out of jail, you can still go to work. You yeah, can you still, can still function. That's the whole point of being out on bail. But it's situational. Like, yeah, they still, were actually good cops. They managed the situation. They were like, yeah. let's not inflame the situation. Like, he's not going anywhere. We're going to yeah. arrest him. Right, Do right. we want rioting rap And then, like, right think now? about the promoter. <laughs> yeah. have to arrest a couple more people. The promoter <laughs> had just put this show together and paid all his money to put this event together and everyone's ready. And, and he then, was headlining. Too. Why does this guy have to take a loss? Right. Yeah. Anyway, see, so, around it, they're gonna arrest him. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I thought immortal technique was like for the little man. You know, he's always. I thought he was a little man guy. He's think, always been for the then, people, now he's for going, change, now he's and all going that. After the so he's punching man. the people selling his shirts. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and he's like, <laughs> and that's not, and that's another see, thing. Like, but see, you have to understand. I've been in that situation where I've seen people sell my stuff. And oh, yeah. It's just an emotional it's thing. It's like, Yeah, you feel violated. It's like these guys didn't get the stuff from me. Because you can't stop. But it. you knew better than to just go up and bully them. I mean, like your reputation. I went. I bullied them in a way. <laughs> no, I, I, you I didn't, did. But you, you didn't knew, you knew, physical. you knew. Yeah, exactly. You I knew not to take people. it to the next level, p- perhaps maybe ruin your rep. You know what I'm saying? No, no one wants to look out. at. No one wants, wants to look you at you. Slam and Sam, the guy that's beating up some vendor for stealing his stuff. That's gonna make you look bad. I don't care what anyone says. You know, like you don't want that on you. Like, why couldn't he just been cool? Just you like, gave him. Yeah, stay you mad. gave him the options. You said, you know, give me my stuff back, right, right. or I'll call the cops. And, you know, you laid right. it out yeah. there. Well, it just depends on the approach too. I'm not gonna go ahead and rob and technically take the stuff because I'm you know what's right. Because immortal yeah. technique is anti-police. Hey, right? OJ is doing 12 <laughs> years plus right now. <laughs> For stealing his own Thank shit. you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And wasn't he like supposedly Chloe Kardashian's like That's propaganda. Yeah. <laughs> propaganda. Dad. Propaganda. Oh, who knows? That's too much. She's so <laughs> ugly, man. Chloe's dad is a white boy. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed. Yeah. That's too much. Oh well. But yeah, if you guys are out there and you start seeing some of your Stuff being sold bootleg wise, don't do what Immortal Technique did. Just try to finesse the situation because you're probably going to make it back if you're really that confident. That's what I'm about. saying. In a way, I'd be like, hey, man, thanks for helping me get my stuff out to a demographic maybe that I couldn't have got out. Yeah, or, you know, yeah. I guess send I'm more out of touch of... with the small man than I thought. Hey, you're working you know? for me, but not Send him on a long you. walk off a short <laughs> pier, you know? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> or just not even make it confrontational. Just go up and say, hey, what's up? Let me get your phone number. I want to buy more shirts and deal yeah. with at yeah. a later time. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and go to his house. Hey, see, see that face on uh, the shirt? That's my face. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and take a quick music break and be back with our special guest, Kevin Pringle, Yee! a.k.a. the champ Woo! of Niner Empire Radio, uh, semi-pro athlete, <laughs> former yeah. manager of Tracks a Million. Okay. Yeah, Tracks a Million. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go deep I with there. the champ here on the Slam Show. Everyone hang tight.
That's a little Tam Tam featuring Biz, if you love, here on the Slam Show. Welcome back. All right, this is the special guest segment, and I have a little slideshow of him in action. This oh was when Whoa. you were doing the Niner Empire show here at TV EPN Studios yes. with Sage and your partner, Karim. Yeah, the night Clubber Lang. Yeah, Clubber Lang. How was that experience when you were on? It was good, actually. I, I didn't know what to expect at all. Um, but, you know, I love the, the setup you guys got. It's technically sound. Okay. And it was fun. It was good to have people actually tuned in and engaging while we were doing the show. And you guys are just great hosts, man. What, what do you want me to say? Hey, man. come <laughs> have, And that's why we had to have you back on. Just a little brief introduction on this gentleman. He runs a podcast, Niner Empire Radio. Yes. He also is a semi-pro football player. Yes. And is an ex-manager for one of the hottest producers here in the Bay Area and has a bunch of stories with some of the hottest oh, sure. acts. Let's have a big round of applause for the champ, everyone. Woo! Yeah, Chip. <laughs> Chip. How you doing, Chip sir? Chip is here. I'm good, man. I've been working a lot. The man's foot on my neck, but, you know, it beats poverty. Damn, that's a pretty violent image there. Why? <laughs> that's how it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's it. You ain't with this or what? That. Well, pardon me. I'm just not that kind of a choking person. <laughs> no, I mean, it's good. I mean, I've been through, I've been through a lot of struggle. And uh, the past few years have been a lot of struggle, but things have really come together. Fuck, man, so. don't say it like that. I'm like looking at your resume; it's all positive now. You're oh, saying it's a struggle light, and shit. The fuck. Sometimes when you're on top, it doesn't look. It's not really as glamorous as it looks. Yeah, and I that's hear that. something that you Lonely only find out. Glamorous lifestyle. Living. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> lot, no one really knows this. Go. But I actually made that song happen. I'll tell you how. Okay. Because you know Jack, I used to run with Jack. I was like my my brother. Rest in peace, Jack. Um. And he was doing a mixtape with a guy named Burner, who is on, like, shit right now. And I play a lot of his tracks at the clubs. It's crazy, because at the time, like, no one knew who Burner was at all. And he was, you know, getting Jack to do projects with him and kind of getting his little exposure like that. And my house was, like, the epicenter for all Bay Area rap activities. Rap your, activities. your house. Yeah, I had a house in Richmond. Uh, they would... Just go there and fucking slumber party oh, and all was, that shit. Slumber was, party. It was 25-8, like, just damn. so much just Someone sleeping in the bathtub and shit. Yeah, if those walls could talk, oh, my God. But um, <laughs> everyone in the Bay used to go there, and it was just like a, a it was the hub. Uh -huh. And um, we were always in there making music and, and just creating adventures. And Burner was there. And I had that glamorous lifestyle beat from Managing Tracks. I had that for years. No one... No one did it. Actually, San Quinn used to have that beat and didn't make nothing happen with it, Quinn. And I just had it. <laughs> and I always thought it was incredible. It was just like a truly incredible beat. And, like, Trax is one of the most talented people I've ever worked with. And those that was one of the beats where he was, like, really in his space. And so Burner liked, loved the beat and was like, oh, I'm going to get that and get Jack on it. And then Jack did that little, da -na -na -da -na 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 -na, mm -hmm. like, doing the little melody. And I was like, dude. How's that go again? <laughs> I hate you <laughs> But uh, anyway the, It was so hot And I was like man No disrespect But I was like man You can't give that to Burner I was like you gotta take that And he was right, like right. And he clicked for, I think he seen it too And he was like You know what you're right I need to take this one to the face And the next thing you know He made that song it, You know It's a, a modern classic Yeah mm -hmm. So yeah it, it was You know it's interesting I'm in a weird phase of my life Where I could look back On a lot of things And it was like Wow I remember that I remember making that happen I remember that person When they were nothing, you know. I remember when that video was made, and it's like all these classic moments. Especially with Jack passing, it was like a lot of memories of just all the things we did, and like all these pictures that people see and are getting tattooed on them. Like those yeah. are like in my house that was taken. Like I was at that photo shoot, so yeah, that's a trip. I'm just experiencing that. Well, let's go ahead and put that in the capsule right now. Set it aside. Yeah. And let's talk about your upbringing as far as being able to get into the music business. Early on, because yeah. you are a veteran. Let's not go nah, ahead and fake the funk. <laughs> nah, it's you, real. You I, got I earned my place. You got some tread marks. <laughs> nah, it's true. Some stretch marks, too. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I was an artist my whole life as far as drawing. You know, I always was just a, okay, so a art. drawing artist. That's okay. all I ever did or cared about. And I used to rap with some of my friends. You know, I'm from the Richmond area, so I'm, of course, going to be involved in a lot of raptivity. 
whether you want to or not. And so ended up just like freestyling with my friends when we were smoking and whatever. And I, I was around some talented just dudes from the streets, like no one notable. Smoking cigarettes? Yeah. <laughs> Funny cigarettes. <laughs> and then some. So on a fluke thing, I ended up in a studio and I freestyled for this guy. And, and this is in high school? This is like right out of high school. Gotcha. Like I was like 18, 19. Gotcha. And this dude wanted to sign me and it just like, at the moment, my life was really going through a lot of changes. My dad had got sick and it just... It just hit me, man. Like, I'm doing music. And so I went out full steam ahead. Like, I'm doing music. I put everything into music. And this is back when, you know, Pro Tools wasn't in every home thing. Mm. You know, there really were no MP3s. Like, email wasn't heavy. It was, like, right on the cusp of that. Like, you know, 99, 2000-ish, 2001. AOL. Yeah. Dial up. And so <laughs> Prodigy. Ended up, it ended up, you know, really pushing the whole artist angle. And I had a mutual friend who grew up with a guy who would become Tracks A Million. And he was raw back then. And all of us knew, like, okay, he's he's dope. Like, we used to always call him Timberland. Like, he's the next Timberland. And he had a group that was incredible. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the team. Yes, like yes. Us. They were the team. Get hot in here. They were the team before the team. Like, yeah. they had that sound. And I was like, oh, that's that's so big. Dun, 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 so long story dun, dun. short, I fell out with a little label I was on. I was like, man, I'm starting my own shit. Like, I'm not dealing with any clowns. I'm doing it my way. And so Trax was the first person I called. And I was like, man, come come work with me. Like, let's do it. And he was like, you know what? I'm down, but my first priority is my group. And I was like, oh, you guys are free agents? Like, I had no idea. He was like, yeah. So, I, you know, I just saw, it, like, the stars aligned. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to put my artistry on the shelf. And put, get behind these guys because they're dope. Like they're now. So I just started learning the business. Like just, so, what at this point? What role were you playing? I was. I didn't even know it, but I was the manager. <laughs> <laughs> I was just. I was the label. So you were booking all I was the shows. The, I was executively producing their album. So you were funding it. I was funding it and directing it. I was gotcha. project managing. Gotcha. And then I was also since there was no one else, I was their manager. Gotcha. So. Gotcha. We put it together. We went through a lot of experience just putting it together. We actually worked with Barry White's son, which was you know interesting. They have the exact same voice. Um, a few other things that just happened, almost happened. But at the end of the day, you know, when you're on the business side, you get to see like, oh, you know, artists are bums. I cuss pretty severely on here, right? Absolutely. Bum ass motherfuckers. A lot of artists are bums. Like, they just don't have hustle. They're gifted, but they don't have hustle. That's like a whole other angle. That's why weak ass rappers are successful because they have hustle. You know, like Amen. all the dope rappers you're never going to hear because they think they're so dope. <laughs> they should be on. Uh. So um, I just felt I was spending a lot of money and I just seen that it wasn't going to go nowhere because everyone's mind wasn't in the right place. So I stepped back because, you know, I thought I was like on a mission from God for real. And I was like, you know what? I must have misread the, the signs. Let me uh, recollect myself. So I just kind of stepped back and I was just doing music just kind of as out of the love of it. Mm -hmm. And I started doing sports talk. It's just, you know, hobbies, and uh, I would listen to the radio, and I heard these beats that were, it was Trax beats. Like, I knew Trax had a sound, and I was like, man, that sounds like Trax. And uh, MySpace came around, <laughs> and I haven't talked to Trax in probably two months, but we, we linked on MySpace, and I was like, man, come out. And he came out, and he stayed with me for like five days. Mm -hmm. And I just seen that everything has changed. Everything had changed. And he told me, he's like, man, I'm, I'm lightweight famous. Like, I got a song on the radio. I got, like, a couple songs on the radio, and people know who I am. I'm like, man, hell no. And so we would go out, and, you know, I was just a, a regular, quote, unquote, civilian. And <laughs> we, would, we would go someplace. and I Hooters or something. I wouldn't see anyone. But I go with tracks, and it's like, oh, that's a producer of this. This is a manager of that. This is a club promoter. So you, like, see this other side of the world. And, like, he didn't understand how fast it was moving. So I just told him, I was like, man, let me work with you, like, I don't have to, you know, be entitled to nothing, but, like, you're on, like, shit. And, like, you need someone with you. And he, he, you know, he knew that was real, and it really was no one else but me. So I just stepped out to be his manager, and then we had, like, the next three years of just domination and just traveling and getting into great adventures and, you know, just living the life, like the real full-time dream. But when you're on, you know, people don't understand is like there's like a lot of real life that goes on. People see the glamour side of it and mm -hmm, not understand mm -hmm. that 
it's actually not glamorous. There's glamorous moments, but it's like, shit, that's the least we deserve for all the BS that we live. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's real talk. Yeah, like, we never waited in line at the clubs, and we were VIPs in the club, but, mm-hmm. like, man, what does that really mean in real life? It doesn't mean shit. You know, and the people that think that means <laughs> yeah. something are, like, people who are trying to be rappers. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's how it started. Gotcha, gotcha. So, basically, that part of your life you've come to terms with. You've, you've already seen the hose. It ran as You clothes. wore the clothes. <laughs> I did. And that, that's your run. Let's talk about, like, the people you ran into and yeah, dealt it's with, crazy. like, at hotels and stuff like that. I'm just going to jump into it. you got to give us some saucy. <laughs> saucy stories with the I don't artists. know how much sauce I can give, but I mean, when you're on, and that's what you are, you're on, like, every everyone wants to be in the, where you're at. Like, if you're, at, like, the athletes, for instance. Mm-hmm. Athletes always wanted to be down with us. And I used to be like, why? You know, like, <laughs> fucking why? Like, we're, we're respected, but yeah. who gives a shit? Like, these guys are worth millions, tens of millions. So, like, Jamarcus Russell, I was around him a lot. And, uh, this <laughs> Jamarcus bo- Russell, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, he is now world-renowned as the biggest bust of all time. But at the time, it wasn't official. It wasn't official. And I was rolling with Too Short, who was, like, the biggest legend out here. You know, I, I ran with him really closely. He loved tracks. He loved Irk, who I also managed. Mm-hmm. And we were going to start a label together, like a whole little empire. That was the, the master plan. So I thought everything was going great, you know? <laughs> And I would go out and all the athletes party together at the same clubs. And you started getting cool with them. And Jamarcus was real cool with us. And I knew some dudes from the streets who would supply his syrup habit, which, you know, it's public knowledge now. Yes. So I had that angle. You know I what had, syrup is, truth, right? Yeah. Okay. Just want to yeah. make sure. <laughs> and it was kind of crazy just to see that life. You know, he was 21 years old. Like, people don't understand that either. You know, he's 21, 22, and he's worth $100 million. And he's like the franchise player of an NFL team. Like, people don't get that. They just think, well, if I was in his position, yeah. like, maybe not, you know? And uh, they live a, a careless life. And that's when, like, when I really realized how on I wasn't. <laughs> like, like this dude <laughs> travels in a jet. Like, he has a certificate for a jet for, like, a year. You know, they give you X amount of miles. And uh, just rolling with those dudes, like, you really got to see the other end of success and privilege. But it was also kind of empty, too, you know? Like, everyone around them is fake as hell. And Jamarcus fell off, and I knew he was going to fall off mm-hmm. because I remember one game, the Raiders were in New York. They played the Jets. They got their ass kicked. So at that night, I was like, well, I'm not going to see Jamarcus at the club tonight. No, he was there. <laughs> he was there with his mink on, sipping syrup, you know. His mink. <laughs> quarter million platinum bracelet on because that's what he was into. You know, he was into the image of it all. And the next thing you know, um, I remember – we were riding around. He had a Rolls Royce Phantom. You know, he has his bow Jeez. in his cup. <laughs> and he was always rolling with his brothers who were heavy uh, cigarette smokers. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember we were in front of the club and he pulled up in front of the club. His boy gets out. His brother is rolling up a cigarette. And uh, he's sipping the syrup. And I remember the promoter came up to us like, hey, you better get your boy, man. Because it doesn't take much for someone to report to the news that the star quarterback of the Raiders is out here sipping syrup. And we were just like, fuck. In a hot box car. <laughs> yeah, because we wanted to work with Jamarcus, you know? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. you're in with them, and it's like, well, let's let's work. Let's make something happen. So we were hoping for that, but then we just knew, like, this is not going to end well. Mm-hmm. And literally, like, a couple weeks later, that article came out. Like, wow. I'm pretty sure I know who made that call. <laughs> but, so, yeah, I mean, it was interesting seeing that side of life, you know? And, and like I said, I, I used to roll too short a lot, mm-hmm. and... Um, that was something else because you see, if you're around the Bay Area and if you're in the Bay Area rap scene, you're gonna see Short. Short's pretty accessible. Absolutely. But if you leave the Bay, you forget. Like he's a legend, you know, has been in men's to society and all these like cultural iconic things. Mm-hmm. So we had a show in uh, East LA, and the Mexicans love Too Short. <laughs> so we went to this party in East LA, which is of course full of Mexicans, and they just went crazy like i've never seen anything like this and i've been in some live shows right right popping shows yeah but they went crazy like he was the freaking new kids on the block and shit right yeah (laughs) and uh keisha cole's family came and it was like some real oakland shit just happening on stage no way you know i was a lot younger so you know cindy define (laughs) oakland shit on stage 
you know, we had all the Mexican chicks up there, and you know, they started getting butt naked, and we started pouring Patron all down the crevices. And <laughs> nice. Oh, it was crazy. I mean, I can't even. I don't even want to keep talking about that. It sounds <laughs> like it's gonna get really graphic in here. Uh, but just gonna start. It was it. just. It was crazy. And then after that, you know, we go from that show that was just out of this world to the after party. To the after party at the hotel at the Standard, which is like the flyest shit in freaking L.A. And we're at this restaurant. This dude just. I see these two. You know pure 90210 white dude's like that's too short yeah <laughs> so we we holler at him and Ryan I just Austin for, Green I and forget shit. it's LA they're like producers for MTV and uh they produce Robin Big which we happen me and and Trax our movement we put a few songs on that show so mm-hmm. we were kind of we, we had an in yeah and, he, and I was like dude let's do a reality show on too short and they were like man like you ain't, you ain't have to sell that let's do it <laughs> So we went to my hotel room. They started snorting all kinds of lines. I'm like, oh, this is Hollywood. Like, <laughs> I just want to smoke this tree. You know? <laughs> I felt like a lame, like, I'm not, I don't want to smoke yeah, I'm coke. Not, Sorry. I'm, I'm just not that hip. Yeah, like, I'm really a square out here. <laughs> but square life. And it was nothing to them, but it just you just forget where you are. You know, I used to do that a lot. I just never, like, would, never was able to digest how big some of the things were, you know, like, where we were. But they wanted to do a show. It was right when uh, Flavor Flav had his own show. Yeah. The Flavor of Love. Flavor of Love. Yeah. We were going to do Love is Too Short. Ooh. Okay. I was going to be so big. Oh, I man. was going to be in it. That's a trademark name you just mentioned, too. I was going to be in it. I was like, okay. What was your role again? I was I was basically like the manager. I yeah. ran the studio. I managed tracks. I managed Irk. Damn. Short wanted. It could still happen. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the first time Short tried to make it happen. Short, you know, has hit me a few times wanting to do some business. It just never panned out for one reason. Why do you think it hasn't panned out? A couple reasons. First of all, Short is a legend, so nothing excites him. Nothing gets him... Riled. Riled, like, e- excited, enthusiastic. Like. So you're saying that wouldn't be a good visual for the camera for a, a daily tune-in by the audience? It's like, okay, that's Short. And Well, what happened was the MTV producers wanted to fly up and shoot a pilot. Yeah. They always do. And Short was like, man, pay me. He said, I quote, and I'll never forget it, if it ain't about money, it ain't about shit. And I was like, man. That's too short for you. If you do the show, God knows what could happen. You give up a weekend of your life and let these freaking clowns with cameras film us. At, do make the- it entertaining. Mm-hmm. We could have a show and be popping. But he was like, nah. Because I want my money. Because oh, technically there is <laughs> yeah. there is a semi script that they're gonna put there in its place because it, it's not gonna be like Saturday and Sunday we're just gonna film twenty four hours right. of too short and come up with something. Well, they, 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 the producers told me the producers told me that they were a little worried. They're like, you know, short doesn't seem like he's just a bundle of excitement necessarily. Yeah, yeah there you go. But we could have done it. We could have done it. You know, there was enough characters around. Short is such a legend. Like, right, right. He's Ken- in with the playmates, Ken- like Kendra. Kendra, whatever her name yeah, is. From That's really Playboy like Mansion. one of his really Next close door. friends. You yeah. know, he'll be at the Playboy Mansion any time. So, um, and any given day, like, you know, when you're rocking with Short, like, oh, Scarface just called me. Oh, the Hughes brothers just called me going to L.A. Like, he was always in that world. Yeah. So, we could have had a dope show. But, you know, he didn't, he didn't want to listen to that, and it really killed a lot of that movement. And that's unfortunate because it, it should have happened. It really should have happened. We had a dope studio in Jacqueline Square. It was, it was, man. And another side of it, let's just talk about it, is, you know, I'm an Anglo-Saxon. I come from European descent. Mm-hmm. And there are some people that didn't necessarily Wasp. feel that. You know, there's a lot of people that have been eaten off short for decades and would wither and die if he didn't look out for them. Yeah. So when I came around, I was a real threat to that, you know, because why have these clowns around when I can do it? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I look better in a boardroom, you know, but those guys did not like that. And they made it very hard for me to, like, be comfortable. There you go. So <laughs> that's a- that's just that, Saxon. that attitude just holds everybody down, though, including What's themselves. That? Just like trying to sabotage you like that. Yeah, that I mean, the, they're already back. down. Like, right. yeah. yeah, they don't know any different. And that's it made it hard because I was there just with this open heart and just trying to work you know and, yeah. and and short really really fucked with me tough and he fucked with my artists but he you know he was too og for it man he couldn't just step yeah. back and just you know disrupt his flow you know he was like fuck it man if it's gonna be a headache yeah i'm gonna go to vegas and get some money like 
Period. <laughs> there you go, ladies and gentlemen. The other side of too short. Yeah. You know what though? I, I actually I would have I would have predicted that Short would have done that. You know, like because you could just tell like he's. He, I mean, I guess you get into entertainment to be in the spotlight and and everyone adoring you and stuff. But you know, he he just seems like one of them guys that really, like you said, just does it his way and and yeah. he he don't he, he can he, like you know it. it I don't think he needs the attention. You know what I'm saying? Like, he already has his legendary status. He likes going out doing shows, but he doesn't need that. And, you know, he's just so laid back, man. He's just, I mean. Well, the frustrating part for me was it wasn't about him. Yeah. It was about, you know, Trax and Irk right. need that. Right. Yeah, you know, to help them out. Like, Trax and Irk. Irk is one of the most talented people I've ever worked oh with as well. Oh, my God. Yeah, and, he is. And that's one of my really, really good friends. Mm-hmm. And, like, Short loved Irk. And he loved tracks more than anything. Like he was like, "Man, I'll do a whole album of tracks." But he believed in Irk just about as much, if not the same. And it was like, "Man, like let this happen," you know. And there was a lot like throughout my journeys in music. There was mm-hmm. a lot of that. Like, like why can't we make this happen? It seems so easy. And then when you talk to someone who's, you know, a fan or someone who's just way on the outside of the business, they don't, they can't comprehend it. Yeah. Because, like. How come that person's not rich? Oh, I could give you 15 reasons. Why <laughs> You'd never yeah. understand yeah. it. Yeah. You know, they think because you hear their song on the radio, they're rich. No, I promise you they're not. Right. There you promise go. promise you they're not. Damn. That is the real deal, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it is. Cool, cool. All right. We're going to go ahead and take a quick music break and be back with more of the champ and his incredible stories here on the Slam <laughs> Show. Hang tight. Yeah, that's a little classic Sugar Hill Gang, Rapper's Delight. My dad's favorite rap song of all time right there. (laughs) Did you just say your dad? Yeah. How about your favorite rap song? Uh, It should be yours as well. Pass it down. It's it's pretty good, especially because... Pretty good? Did you just say pretty good? That that extended version, I mean, it's it's pretty damn good. 12 minutes? Yeah. (laughs) It's pretty long. But it is. I the am classic. one to Mike, and I'd, I'd like, like to say, say hello. hello. <laughs> yeah, of there you go. There you go. I could do the whole freaking first verse, but that's yeah. another time. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to the Slam Show. We are resuming our 
a special guest interview with the champ of yeah. Niner Empire Radio, ex-manager for a lot of the hottest hip-hop veteran artists here yeah. in the Bay Area. We're reminiscing. Reminiscing little times here. What's the Memory point of having late. adventures if you can't share them? Exactly, man. Cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag cigarettes. Lots of that. There you go. That's okay. the new hashtag. All right. Let's go ahead <laughs> and have my co-hosting staff ask you a few questions, starting with Captain sure. Fantastic. Okay. So uh, I love that name. Early, oh, thank you. I think that developed out of like a bowling screen name, <laughs> to be 100% honest. But anyways, um, so you were talking about Niner Empire Radio and yes. your involvement with that since you did spend a lot of time with athletes. Um, yeah. T- tell us about that project, kind of how that got started, because you mentioned that you um, – kind of dabbled in radio radio for a minute and yeah sports talk the sports talk angle uh well basically um one day i was looking you know i was in my music business mode and i was looking for just new ideas and inspiration so i went to a bookstore and i just found this book that was about digital reality of music and in the book you know a bunch of bs i don't remember but one (laughs) line in there talked about internet radio and it just, a light bulb went off, like, sports talk. Like, I would kill at sports talk. So I started doing it. I already had the studio equipment for music, so I just started kind of dabbling, trying to create a sports talk show. And I called myself the champ of sports talk and just try to figure it out, you know, and lots of stumbling, lots of fumbling. But um, over a few periods of time, I, I started really kind of getting it rocking. I've always been cool with the guy who, who runs the Niner Empire, but my show in particular, it was just way too inconsistent. You know, music was my main hustle, which is horribly inconsistent, <laughs> you know, just as far as a life. But there's been periods of time where, like I said, I got it rocking. I had, like, I interviewed a lot of the uh, Harlem Globetrotters. Oh, cool. Um, one of the guys on the Harlem Globetrotters who was there when Jason Williams killed his limo driver. Oh, and he told me about that fuck? whole story, which was like, whoa, like, I, fr- I didn't realize who I got on the show. So that was dope. And Special K, who played one-on-one with Jordan. You know, I don't know if you guys remember back in the day. Um, Jordan, I think it was a Pepsi commercial. But Jordan played himself. He played his young, the younger version of himself. Yeah, oh, yeah. Gatorade? Yeah, so Special K played Jordan's younger version of himself. So they wrote a scope Jordan's face on him. So he told me about that experience of actually playing Jordan, which was, like, incredible. So I, I really like sports talk. It just never was, like, my main thing. And then the contest happened for 95-7, the game which was, you know, you come in and it was like an American Idol-esque okay. concert. And if you win, you win your own show. So I was like, man, like everyone around me told me to go do it. So I was like, man, let me do it. And so I went there and I, I did really well. And um, because of my personality and my boisterousness, <laughs> I was pretty well known throughout the contest. And I made it all the way to the final four where I got uh, eliminated, and it was really a conspiracy. Like, I pissed the PD off. Somewhere between point A and B, I rubbed the PD the wrong way, and they got me out of there. And the guy who was my only real competition, he ended up getting a show. I, he, it might even still be on the air. I think it is. But um, I love sports talk. you know. So after that, it really got my sports talk vibe going again. Joe from the Niner Empire, you know, he said, man, my platform's here for you. You know, I support you. So I started doing a Niner-focused sports talk show, which is cool because I love sports, but I love the Niners, like, more than anything. Like, that's that's what I could sit and talk about and care about for hours. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't, I don't, do I care? Do I give a shit about the Jets or the Chargers? I don't. But I'll talk <laughs> about Detroit the Or Detroit Lions. Yeah, the Whoa. Detroit Lions or Houston Rockets. Like, do I care? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. You know, I don't follow them. There's only so much time in the day. Lions for life. <laughs> but anyway, like, I've been doing the Niner Empire radio thing for a few years now. And it, it's me and my, my co host, Nightclubber Lang. Like, I feel we got a pretty good chemistry. My boy, ID, who I've met through music and who's got even more stories than me. Um, he's been great on the boards and, like, producing the show and just kind of giving it a little bit more of a polish. So it's been good. You know, um, I kind of wish we can get a little bit more momentum. But my experience is anything that you try to push kind of falls apart. So I just let it be organic. And that's why I'm just, you know, I come here and do things like this. You know, it's always good to just be organic. Yeah, be organic, man. <laughs> let the let shit it grow. happen. Just yeah. be a chain of hydrocarbons and nitrogen. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, exactly. That's, that's the definition of organic, just so you guys know. Hashtag <laughs> chemist. <laughs> Amino acids. <laughs> yep. So that, that's my sports talk angle. So I'm going to keep doing it. 
um, I want to expand into other shows. Like this is a little bit more of a universal show. Like that, I want to do stuff like this. Um, Adam Carolla, you spoke about earlier, like with the Man Show. I oh, love yeah. that. Like I want to <laughs> do something like that. Like there's a few, um, there's a few podcasts out. One's called It's a Man's World, and another one's called The Man Cast. Um, there's a few of those dope. out there. Yeah, they're they're on my Instagram. I yeah, because I mean I'm a caveman. I'm from the old school man. <laughs> <laughs> so you Neanderthal. Yeah, I'm. I call myself. I'm a meninist. I, I'm for male rights. Meninist. <laughs> you know, like we should be allowed to be cavemen and be a man. That's what we are. Why do we have to be all Amen. sensitive and shit? Eh? Get my drink, woman. <laughs> yeah. Amen. <laughs> so my great grandpa champ. My grandpa was a real man. He was. Okay. A, he was a teamster. Okay. He didn't take any shit. And my grandma's name was Beverly. So in the, in the family, there's a little joke. It's called Beverly Cheez-Its. Because when he got home, he would just say, Beverly Cheez-Its. And Cheez-Its would magically appear in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> he was a hero of mine. <laughs> it's not working well in this 2015 empowered world that we live in. <laughs> but it's who I am. Well, you got to do something that makes Cheez-It delivery worthwhile. <laughs> then there's that. You know, back in the day... You know, you just go and you make the bread, and that was enough. I don't think that's enough nowadays. No. Nowadays, nope. you got to do all kinds of extra stuff. Mm -hmm. That's cool. You know, got to do I'm, a lot of bonuses. I'm a giver. I'm a bonus giver. Oh, okay. <laughs> there, you there you go. Right on. Mike Hill. Yeah, what's up, man? Uh, it's been really refreshing getting to talk to you so far, man. Uh, right on. A couple quick questions, man. Uh what was it like to grow up in the rich? You know, I know a lot of horror stories from people that are kind of just outsiders. Yeah. Did you just say whore? Well, <laughs> I said horror. That's what I heard, too. Uh, That's what I heard, too. San then, Pablo Ave is a lot then, of horror stories. And then, <laughs> and then secondly, man, uh, being that your nickname's The Champ, have you ever seen the movie The Champ? Which one is that? Uh, with John Voight and uh, l l the little guy. I don't know who plays the little guy, but John Voight's like the old kind of uh, – you know, mashed up boxer used to be a former boxer. It sounds familiar. And then, and then his son kind of inspires him to get back in the ring. Okay, and I've heard really of that good. movie. It's, it's a seventies movie. It's kind of a tearjerker, especially at the end when She's John Boyd. Yeah, I ain't yeah. Seen it check either. it out. Check it out, man. The, the champ. Yeah. Spoilers. No, I'll have to check it out. No, yeah. um, growing up in Richmond is a unique experience. You know, I've been all around the country, so it's like you really get as you meet more people, especially as you grow up, you kind of realize the uniqueness of your upbringing. Like, I grew up in the Richmond Unified School District. Like, real shit was happening right. from a young age. And you look back and, like, I would talk to some of my friends who I'd meet from, you know, bumfuck Iowa, whatever. And you start trading stories of your childhood and you realize, like, wow. Like, I lived a wild-ass life. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm lucky to be alive. Like, there's all kinds of foul shit going on. But at the same time, for me, I mean, first of all, God blessed and protect me my whole life, man. Seriously. Because a lot of people weren't as blessed. I have had friends who, you know, have been killed and, and all kinds of shit, and it's not cool. Like, it's not cool. But when you're from Richmond, you're a little, like, a lot of people from, you know, let's just talk about it. Martinez. <laughs> you know, those areas. Like, there's tough guys anywhere you go. Don't Our co-host, DJ Stallion. But I'm just saying, Martinez, <laughs> Martinez is not Richmond. Hill. And if you grow up in <laughs> Richmond, you can tell the difference when you go to right. Martinez. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. So growing up around all like all different walks of life, like Richmond is the ultimate melting pot yeah. of like everything. Yeah. So that, I mean, it, it empowered me. What high, school, <laughs> what high school did you go to out there? I went to Pinole. My mom wasn't going okay. to go to no Richmond High. Okay. <laughs> so I went to Pinole. But you know what the funny thing is? Pinole was actually the shittiest school in the district. Because all the worst kids from Richmond and Kennedy would get shipped to Pinole. Mm. So we had this cornucopia of just thuggery. Cornucopia. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I knew it was real when I was in eighth grade. And you know, I was looking forward to high school. Like, okay, open campus, you know. And then there was a gang shooting. And they closed <laughs> campus. And I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> and then all that did was make it worse. Because now no one had anywhere to go. So it was like a thousand kids on top of each other just fighting every day. I was a conflict manager. That was fun. You started early managering. Yeah. Oh. Against my will. Everything in life has just happened, man. I never what, looked for any of it. What was a good fight? What was a good conflict that you uh, helped resolve? Oh, <laughs> you defused. That's the, old, that's the greatest question you could have ever asked. <laughs> there was a guy at my school, and he was in high school 
three hundred plus, and he's like five seven. So he's a fat kid, and he got picked on a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot. Like you know, he's probably gonna grow up to be a serial killer a lot. Wow. There's another kid, and he had horrible um, birth defects. You know, he had a lot, a lot, like he had extra nipples. He had Dude. he had a lot of shit going on, and like health problems, and he needed those uh, stilt crutches to walk sometimes. He'd be in a wheelchair a lot. But these two guys, since they were outcasts, they became good friends. Mm-hmm. And it was always the odd couple. Yeah, I didn't make fun of them at all, but it just you know, it's the not an, an odd couple. Yeah. So one day I get called to manage this little conflict, and it's these two. And I'm like, oh god, like what the hell could this what? possibly be? And so they're fighting each other. They fight each other. So oh, it was a one-sided fight, let me tell you. But the <laughs> fat kid, he he was push, pushing his friend, and the handicapped kid was like, man. Fuck you. And then the fat kid got pissed and rolled him into like a thorn bush. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. oh. Like, it was too hard. I, I couldn't even manage it, man. I, wow. I had to step out because it was, it was funny. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I would have died. Lord, I apologize. Please forgive me. But that well, was funny. It was hilarious. To a high school boy. Oh, my gosh. It doesn't uh, matter how like <laughs> serious or helpful you're trying to be. Oh, uh, and, 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 and really, <laughs> I have evolved so much as a human being. I certainly hope so. I was an absolute <laughs> bastard back then. Like I was laughing, just like, man, yeah. get me out of here, man. <laughs> yeah, conflict management. Man. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Truth. Yeah. All right. So you know, it was great talking to you, Champ. Yeah. Um, at first, I would just want to commend you for your your oh, advanced you. advanced lexicon of words. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, Does it outdo Captain Fantastic well, vocabulary? You guys have a very well, actually, you guys have the word lexicon just means the ability to recognize words. Okay. So I like, like this. That's chick. like if you have a dog and you can tell him sit and he knows what to do. Okay. He doesn't have language acquisition, but he has like. Le- lexicon, excuse me. Okay. She's very smart. So. But, uh, yeah, he was using words like you know, cornucopia and all that. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> he knows these things, You're right? like, you're <laughs> like, shit. <laughs> I got an erection <laughs> off here and there. Yeah. I, I got mean, a I medium. Mean, I just want to, well, because you know, you, you're, you're, you know, you, you, you're spitting freestyles and you're a part of the hip hop business. So you I mean that's why you have like advanced. That's why we got on the business side. You have advanced, you know, like or above average. I can compose sentences. That's what made me a manager. Compose sentences. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here's my question is, uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of kids nowadays, you know, that just want to get in the music business. And we, we were talking about this earlier. <laughs> you know? So what are some of the main pitfalls when it comes pitfalls? to... Pitfalls? Yeah. So, I mean, like, if you uh, were... It's like probably how much a, time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, a good five probably, minutes. Probably the biggest pitfall, maybe, like... The biggest pitfall is yeah. people uh, need to discern what their dream is versus the reality. Okay. Like, everyone chases a music dream. Of being platinum and millions in the fat mansion and the big booty girlfriend, like that's not really what it is. That's that's not real life. Not the big booty girlfriend. No, that's real life. <laughs> but you know, the, 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 I'll tell you. But, but the fine print on that is she's gonna cheat on you. She's already cheating on you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's just talk about well, it doesn't that. Doesn't matter if you. And there's a disclosure. And, and she's a terrible wife. I mean, a terrible mother. I guarantee there's that side of it too. But what I'm saying is, people chase this <laughs> dream. <laughs> they want to be something like. You're supposed to just love music and then be great at music and be like an engaging, charismatic person, and then you're freaking someone. Right. But all these cornballs see it and like, man, I want to be like Baby and Wayne in the video. <laughs> I mean, you're a cornball, man. Like, <laughs> like, don't do it. Just go to school. Stay away. <laughs> go to school. You heard that. But then, no, the real thing is they need to also understand of like what this business is. like, And that's why – to go back to your question earlier about being from Richmond, like that did help me a lot, like seriously. Because first of all, people understood that Richmond was not some punk ass Danville <laughs> and like give me a bit of respect. Like I'm not right. just a honky boy. I mean, I am a honky boy, but sorry for the language. But I'm just saying like, I'm not, they respected it. They're like, okay, you understand rap. You understand the world. Like you're in a world with thugs and drug dealers, period. If you're in the rap world, <laughs> seriously, you're not getting away from that. People that are in rap are the people, same people that are in the streets. They just took their money and, and put it in music because they could. And you have to remember that. That's the business you're dealing with. So when you're trying to do business, you're doing business with these people. And that's how they know business is from that world. So that's a big challenge, and a lot of people don't understand that. So sometimes when people would say, I want to rap, I would laugh. Because it's like, you never swim in, the, in this ocean of sharks. Mm. Ever. You know? Like... So that's the that's the biggest one, and really the the other big one is that, man, you're choosing money or you're choosing this. 
because you're you're probably not going to have both. Like, if you're in the music business, you're not making money, mm-hmm. guaranteed. And if you are making some money, it's not going to last for very long. And your standard of living is probably so way too high than what it should be that you're going to be broke again. Period. I promise you. Let's let's go on to the reality point that you're saying. How about someone like Too Short? What's his standard of living right now? That's a good question. A lot of people ask me that. Um, <laughs> no, because people want to know. Like people imagine. Like well, he's of, been in the game. Short's a legend. So like one of his homies who was really putting me on the situation used to tell me like he needs you because he should be Jay Z. He should be Puffy, but he's not. And he's not. I mean, Short's not hurting for money. Short has you know a beautiful house in Atlanta. He has you know a nice spot in L.A. He, he's He's cool, but does Short he's like comfortable. does Short still benefit from these shows he's doing? Sure, he does. Mm-hmm. Does he want that money to go away? No, he doesn't. You know, guarantee like like Forty is a, a a little bit different. You know, Forty has been very rich for a very long time, and he makes business maneuvers. Like Short doesn't do a lot of business maneuvers, but Short will always yeah, have a bunch of shows lined up to make you know five thousand, ten thousand dollars a pop. Right. You know, in small towns across the country, and just be getting it. So mm-hmm. it's just different ways of getting it, you know. And, and that's what you kind of have to realize. And that's what Short has mastered. You know, Short's forty something years old. He's been in the game for over thirty years. Like he understands that. Like he needs to keep getting these little things. Right. He can't be too big and say, "I'm not doing a show in Petaluma." Nah, hell nah. He's gonna do a show in Petaluma. Everyone in there is going to buy something of his. He's going to make, you know, a yeah. few thousand. It's just a lot more practical reality that people don't get. There's no retirement plan in this shit. <laughs> Period. No 401k no or 401K, anything. Man. Nothing. <laughs> Ira, nothing. <laughs> no. That's, I mean, I mean, you could kind of just tell. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm just payment. guessing just like in his in the in the way he flows and the, the way he became legendary status. Like he just seems like a very just simple guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, he is. Like, I mean, I, I'm sure he lives somewhat of a lavish life at times, but he just seems like more of someone nah. just a simple, <laughs> I mean, a simple guy like his father. We that. So simple, so That's the thing, though. You know? When you're really. Come on, Mike. Yo, this ain't the videos. When you're really successful, you don't live like that. Right. You know, when you live lavish, you're broke. Yeah. You're going to be broke because yeah. you don't, like, people that live like that, like, man, what are you doing? Right. You know, like, like 40 has a, you know, he lives in Blackhawk. Very successful, but he's lived there for 20 years, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not, like, continuously upgrading his house or, you know. Right. Like, you have to be practical. You have to have a Mm -hmm. realistic vision of what this is. And when I ask everyone who wants to do it, why? Right. Why do you want to do it? Do you want to do it because you've watched too many videos? (laughs) Because a lot of, I mean, seriously, I've I've asked that question to a lot of people, and people think I'm an asshole. And I am an asshole, but I'm not asking that to be an asshole. I'm asking it because I wish someone would have asked me that sometimes. You what know, I'm, like what I'm thinking that love, you could be love. a perfect hip hop consultant, oh, oh, counselor oh. to aim these children from this senseless dream into something more you know productive. What? You should be that. I've you wanted to be that. You could yeah. be a hip hop incubator. I've wanted to be that, but I get looked at like a mm-hmm. hater a little bit, and and I am a hater. I hate this shit. <laughs> well, you, know what? you know what? It's interesting you say that because too many people are confusing. You know, they want to throw around the word hater. To people that call out their shit. Right. There's a difference. Yeah. Well, in Calling that, out bullshit yeah. is being honest. Mm-hmm. Well, I would tell people, they say, tell me what you think. And I'm like, do you really want me to tell you what I think? Or do you want me to just tell you you're dope? I mean, if you want me to tell you you're dope, I'll tell you right now, you're, you're raw. But, but you're not. You know, you suck. <laughs> this music is good, but not great. And good is as good as suck in my world. And I would tell people that. Oh, dang. Some people would respect it because they know what I was saying. Yeah. You know? But other people, the people like you just spoke about who... What do you think? I'm like, well, it's not that good. Well, you're just a hater. <laughs> like, no, nah, you just suck. Yeah. And that was like, well, I have I, valued opinions. I used to love that about my position when I was on is that people knew if I said it, it as mu- as hard as it hurt. It was legit. It was fucking legit. Yeah. And they all knew it. Yeah. <laughs> so well, they had to take it. Well, remember, before uh, we started the program, I did a pre-interview with you, and you start breaking down all the names. I'm like, oh my god, we, we gotta kind of like drift back away from the Niner Empire stuff yeah, and, no, and talk definitely. about some of the meat and cookies of your music yeah, background. No, it, it's cookies. a huge part of my life. I mean, Those I'm 35. My things. I'm 35 years old right now. <laughs> I'm about to be 36 in a couple months. I've been, I spent my whole 20s dedicated to music. Yes. Like, all in on the table. All in. I quit a very high paying executive type or a corporate job mm-hmm. to do this shit full time because we were winning. 
you know we've traveled like and i witnessed a huge period of music that where everything changed you know when i first like we put out tracks a millions album the slap addict and that was one of the last albums that sold anything because everything changed like right after that and we sold over 10,000 units with no promotion Really, the whole album is other people's music. There was some exclusive music on there. Yeah, it was a compilation. But Tracks is a producer. Yeah, yeah, so it was a compilation, but it did extremely well. And and right after that, like that same album would probably do three thousand today. You know what I'm saying? Like, Agreed. It's just, what happened? What, what do you think happened? MP3s took over. iTunes oh. took over. You know, like everything downloading was already begun, but like iTunes and blogs, like people aren't gonna pay for what they can get for free. Just Period. It's not going to happen. And nothing. The only people are going to pay you for your stuff are like the diehards. Yep. And you got their money anyway. So m- the whole model for music has changed now. And, you and got I'm, it. I'm glad I'm out. <laughs> 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 I still love music. I play guitar now. I got a little rock band called Free Leonard. You know, we make some little music and shit. Nice, nice. I've grown. I've grown so much. <laughs> You've matured. Is that, is that what I see grown spray man. painted on the overpass on Yeah, AD? you okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you do that? No. <laughs> Another long story short. Um, I always wondered we started, about that. I started playing guitar <laughs> for fun. A friend of mine makes beats, told me to come by and play some guitar. guitar. At the end of the day, we had a rock song. It mm-hmm. came out of nowhere. We were like, what the hell? Did another song ne- like the next day or the week later. Before you knew it, in like two months, we had like a six-song EP of songs we liked. And I didn't even know I could play guitar, but I was playing. And, That's awesome. Uh, we called it Free Leonard because there's a, a Native American person who was imprisoned in the 70s. It's all this political stuff. But there's a guy out here who campaigns for Free Leonard. And he posts these painted pictures on like the highest telephone poles and trees in the area, in the Richmond oh, yeah, area. Yeah, right out there, like right as you come into Berkeley, all, yeah. all that exit. So one yeah. day, <laughs> I had left my house, after already being up on the Free Leonard stuff, and I left my house, and there was a huge Free Leonard sign across the garage door of my neighbor. The Free Leonard guy was my neighbor. Oh, shit. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> oh! Like, so, yeah. Oh. So my oh, group's dang. Free Leonard, like it's official. <laughs> That's right cool, on. man. What a story. Can yeah. you believe that? Huh. The guy... Over that freaking overpass, yeah. is here. He lived Connected. next door to me. I used to watch him like at night. I thought he was a meth cooker because <laughs> he looked like you know he looked like he was you know he dabbled in this stuff. And at night he'd be in that garage at late hours, and it was like, what's going on in there? What the fuck like, is he doing? It's like uh, Jeepers Creepers. Like, what is this? <laughs> and then one day I seen Freelander. I was like, oh, he's just a Freelander guy. Like he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. Right on. Right on. Yeah. All right. Guess what time it is? It is the vaunted Q and A. So we're Uh-oh. we're just gonna go into it big time, and I don't know. Should we do the rated X male, oh, let's Captain? Do it. How candid are you? Oh, he wants to are go you? balls out. Okay. Yeah, my balls are hanging out. Oh, I mean, hey. Okay. I feel, I feel all kinds of draft right now. Oh, man. <laughs> you are daring. Okay, okay. Right. Let's go Uh-oh. ahead and kick this off. All right. Ten questions. Uh-oh. And you are at the very top of the food chain on this because this is rated X for the males. <laughs> so here we go. Start it off, Captain. All right. Uh, how many girls have you slept with? Ooh, you stood right Honest to the top. Answer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I don't have an exact number. Uh, dozens. All right, Na- h- how many that one night with too short? I mean, I, you know, <laughs> there's been a few. There, there's been a few memorable nights where I was like, God, I wish I could live this night for the rest of my life. <laughs> but there's been dozens. dozens? You know, there, and I'll say this, it could have been dozens more, but I am a very, I'm very hyper scared about like a baby mama mm-hmm. and AIDS. <laughs> like that's, that's a healthy fear. I think. it is. Yeah. I mean, I've like as Eddie Murphy once said, I throw my dick on the crap table many a night, <laughs> and I have. But I'm very clean. I've actually been recently tested. I'm clean as a whistle. It was the best feeling ever, even though I felt like I didn't have AIDS. To like see a paper and say you don't have AIDS. I'm like, yeah. Yay! Life goes on, <laughs> baby. Winning lotto ticket. All right. In connection to that, number two, have you slept with more than one girl within a 12-hour span? Oh yeah. Absolutely. We <laughs> man, we were on, man. <laughs> like yeah, that that was, that was a there was a period of time where I was I was active, man. Mm. Pure active. There was, you know, there was the radioactive. There was the earlier part of the day, there was the mid part of the day, and then there was the after part of the day. 
<laughs> after you know sounds a, sounds like a very healthy lifestyle again i was extremely conservative compared to some of my cohorts who shall remain anonymous <laughs> fair enough <laughs> all right uh at what age did you lose your virginity a uh, 15 15 wow yeah that number right completely confident it's 15 yeah i mean shit i was a kid mm-hmm. you know half pump jump there you go. That's all it took. <laughs> yeah. It was the greatest 30 seconds of her life. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no awkwardness like a USB. Oh, it was terrible. No, nah, it, it was one of the worst. <laughs> it was one of the worst sexual performances in, in, in history. <laughs> but I have come to make up for it. You know, I paint masterpieces on that box. <laughs> Next question. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. How often do you visit the strip club? I don't. Um, wow. Go, yeah. I'm kind of taken back all, by that. First of all, the strip club is is a travesty. First of all, if you go to the strip club in the Bay or in California in general, you're not going <laughs> to a strip club. Let me just tell you that. That's the first thing. Go to Atlanta. Go to Houston. Those are strip clubs. Ooh. There's chicken. There's beer. <laughs> there's booty. Dude, Atlanta is something else. Atlanta is, please. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. They have a daycare in the fucking strip please, club. They do. And they have and they have food and drink. Like you can't even drink in a strip club out here. Not and at the nude clubs. You can at the topless ones. Yeah, at, at Gold Club or something like that. Yeah. They have like a buffet. Yeah, I hate strip clubs. I mean, I, I really do. Like, I've had some fun times in strip clubs, mm-hmm. but for the most part, like, so we're gonna I'm do a man it. of action. Okay. So if you're gonna wave your vagina in my face, I'd like to like <laughs> touch it and caress it. I don't want to just stare at it and throw money at it. I'm like, man, this is terrible. This is a bad idea. <laughs> Thank you. We got the championisms. That's the hashtag, right. ladies and gentlemen. Right. It's hashtag championisms. Right. Champions. There it is. I'm telling you, man. Championisms. I'm gonna write strip that clubs down. are a losing bargain. <laughs> now, real quick, and I have a, a, a strip club horror story. Right? Go. The Pink Diamond, which was in Frisco, and like one of the worst neighborhoods in downtown Frisco in the Tenderloin. My boy was a DJ there. We used to go there all the time after the clubs. It was like the after spot. You know, it was up until four or five, six in the morning, and it mm-hmm. was completely lawless. And we were in there with Steven Jackson. Yeah. You know, we was playing with the Warriors at the time. Mm-hmm. We were going crazy, man, just throwing money. And, you know, it was just raining everywhere. Not my money. <laughs> but the stripper was, like, dancing on me the whole time. And she looked good. And I was like, man, you know, in my back of my head, I'm like, I wonder if I could have sex with her. I left, and I had a white, like, LRG uh, track jacket. It was covered in butt makeup. Like, sure. Like tanning stuff? Yeah, like, like she was black. You know, like a light-skinned black woman. Yeah. It, it, like, all her light-skinnedness came off on my clothes because it was fake. Because she had makeup all over her ass pimples. It was <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and then the whole facade just shattered like, what kind of dreams am I buying? <laughs> Funny when them lights come on, right? Oh, man. <laughs> and them drinks wear off. All right. right. Speaking oh, of man. drinks. Right? Oh, uh, God. What is your favorite alcoholic beverage? That's a good question. Um, it all depends. You know, I, I usually keep it pretty simple. I used to drink Long Islands, but then I grew up, and then I, I'm really like a tequila and juice kind of person. Gin but, and juice, Patron yeah, and Patron pineapple. and pineapple. Yeah. That's a simple, yeah, that's a simple one. You already know. Um, and then as I've gotten more into my Angloness, which has been the case <laughs> in my older years, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm a Jack and Coke kind of guy. You know, there you go. Put a little hair in your chest. There you go. Well, not okay. you. <laughs> no fair guess. <laughs> Number six. Have you ever touched a girl's ass in a club? Not a strip club, like a, yeah, like a normal. Let me pro- tell you something, Sam. I've whipped out in the club before. All right. Hey. You know, if you want to talk about extra, yeah. song in the club. You grabbing my ass in the club. You said like, my name and got the point across. I like that. Yeah. Let me right? tell you something, man. Like <laughs> grabbing ass in the club is like, like getting a drink at the club. Like you're going to do that, right? Yeah. I mean, God. <laughs> My goodness. I've done terrible things in the club. <laughs> this is sounding pretty terrible, but I like it for some sick You know reason. who tried to rape me in the club before? New York from Flavor of Love. Really? <laughs> it's true. Wow. <laughs> New York. And I, I'm going to be embarrassed to say it crossed my mind to let it happen. <laughs> I was like, I can't even do it. Even I, the scumbag that I am, I can't go that low. Wow. A day. Wow. I can't follow Flavor Flav. I don't want to follow my own homies. I'm definitely not oh. following Flavor Flav. Oh, you would have some. Oh, yeah. sloppy yeah. seconds. Oh, sloppy seconds. 70 seconds. Yeah, s- sloppy billions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Juice is everywhere. Sloppy billions. I'm going to use that. <laughs> sloppy billions. <laughs> <laughs> is that the new hashtag now? Sloppy billions. We got a bunch of them all yeah. of a sudden. 
toward the end. Oh man. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what's the most kinkiest place you've had sex? Um, or I don't know. I'll tell you, one of the, the craziest or... times was uh, it was Trax's <laughs> release party. I think it was his release party. Whatever it was, we we threw some of the smackingest parties in Bay Area history. And one of the parties we had, we had a little Wayne there. Mm-hmm. Jewels was there. It was cracking, like, unbelievably, like, fire marshal was going to shut it down, cracking. All the thugs were on stage with their guns out in the <laughs> open. And I was with... Brandishing them. I was with my work at the time, and she was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm ready to... Yeah, you know? and I was like, oh. So well, she got turned on off all the oh, illegal activity, like, I like you, dripping I, wet. I was living like, like a, a fucking outlaw, right? So she was like, man, let's go. It's like, man, you don't got to tell me twice. So we go to the, the parking lot. So I'm getting a little service. And someone gets shot in the parking lot, like, right behind my car. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, and, like, er- just chaos. Utter chaos, 360 degrees of chaos. Cops were there, pulled out on the dude who got shot. And everyone's escaping, like, literally driving as fast as they can through the parking lot to escape. And I'm getting top. And it's not stopping. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> like, at some point I just submitted, like, hey, fuck it. I was like, fuck it. I'm living the life. <laughs> nah, you know what? I ain't gonna lie. I felt a certain way about myself after that night. I was like, you know what? I'm a fucking rock star, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got, you know, that job continued all the way home. That was in Santa Cruz, Santa Clara. So that was from Santa Clara to Richmond, a pure dome. Pure top. <laughs> pure all top. the way down. That happened in real life. Facts only. Factual. Number eight. Which three celebrities would you like to have sex with? Oh, only three? Three, for top, now, for top, this show. Top three. That's a good question. Top three celebrities I want to have sex with. Man, now you ask me, I can't think of it. Um, Guy or girl? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. First I've done it all. all. No, nah, I'm, str- I'm pure vagina. <laughs> Fuck it. I've um, done it all. Try it. I don't know. I mean, I go I go through different, different uh, eras, you know? It's like... But who's in your spank bank right my now? My spank bank right now? Yeah. Man, I have real people in my spank bank. <laughs> <laughs> I've grown past celebrity spank. Jenna Jameson? Um, no, nah, you know who's my number one spank bankery right now? All right, The just chick one. from uh, Wolf of Wall Street. What's her name? Oh, okay. She's British she's or something. So, right? She's Australian. Australian. Excuse Thank me. Thank you very much. Get it right now. <laughs> no, but she's badass. She's a new chick. She's. I think she's about to be pretty famous. She seems like she's in some new movies. If you guys are in the chat room. Google it real quick. Yeah, whatever her name is. She's in the, the new Will Smith movie, right? I beat the out? I'll beat the hell out of my penis thinking about her. <laughs> Just fucking <laughs> trick that shit off. Oh, uh, 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 <laughs> there's blood coming out. Fuck it. I'll beat the hell out of it. <laughs> like it owes you money. Right? And I'm gonna say this too, Beyonce. All right, she's really? overrated, right? But I really feel like that box hasn't been punished well enough. Woo! And if given the Hot opportunity box. to punish that box, the PTB, that you know. Things would change for okay for the better. <laughs> Not like they can get any better. All right, one more. Oh. Sorry, we'll let them off. One more, one more. Yeah, p- please. One more. Oh, one more yeah, celebrity. One more, yeah, one yeah. more person. <laughs> um, um, you know what? Just for the sake of it, Ronda Rousey. I'm not into the the, the male masculine <laughs> women thing. Yeah. But man, there's something about it. It's, it's extremely hot. And you know, a lot of people say that for some weird. Sick I've reason. seen her. I've seen her little swimsuit thing. Yeah. I've seen her dressed up for some awards show recently. I was like, man, I'll punish that box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, period. Her name Hashtag is Margo, PTB. right? Margo, yeah, yeah Margo yeah, something. Okay. Gotcha. Margo Roby or something. Is that it? Well, Niner Empire is typing in in Margo from Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> yeah, that's, if her name is Margo. He knows what I'm talking about. That's yeah. Margo Robbie. Son. That's, yeah, spank your vision. There you go. Just spank that shit. Fuck uh, it. You guys get me ready to go home already. Oh, All right. <laughs> so is that it? No, no, no. It's two more. Okay, so number nine. Have you ever had a bromance? Real or quick. A man crush? A non-sexual one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what we mean. Yeah. Oh, sure. I have a few bromances. You know, my young homie Peach Out, we have an open bromance. You know, his girlfriend hates it. But that's my bro. There you, you know? go. <laughs> We're fucking. Yeah, you know? yeah. We're stepbrothers. Um, I had a bromance on uh, Navarro Bowman for a while, you know, the way he plays the game. It just, you know, warmed my heart a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> warm, it warm, touched me here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel and, it. you know, as, hey, as I We got grown, the chat room saying, hashtag awkward. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I didn't say I whipped out and put him in my spank bank. I just said I admired the guy. No, and then my real bromance, you know, as I've gotten older and, and embraced my Anglo-Saxon upbringing, mm-hmm. I really got into Leonard Skinner, man. It's the most, you know, 
absolute white bread music yeah. but man it speaks to my heart and soul and i just <laughs> oh like ronnie van zant that's like the ultimate bromance that's a real man american man <laughs> <laughs> like brett Favre. oh he makes me feel like a flaming communist lesson. <laughs> like man this guy's a real man right here all right let's close it out number strong 10. hung vibe have you ever video ta- videotaped yourself having sex yeah i wish she would have known <laughs> oh! <laughs> Nah, you know, I've snuck video, you know, getting some action before. Okay. I never just, you know, I never just set up the set, you know, like, let's get the lighting and, you know, the fluff girls. I just, you know, see some action, let's get my phone. Like, oh, let me just look at my text real quick. <laughs> set it up. <laughs> nice. Nice. I'm a scumbag. I'm sorry. Hey, but no, you are not. a scumbag. I am. All right. Unashamed. The champ, you have made it through the vaunted Q&A. Woo! The flying colors. <laughs> and very, without very further happy. ado, we're going to go ahead and close out the show with the shouts and plugs, and we'll begin with Captain. Uh, thanks again to Matt and Sherry over at Dickie's Barbecue for tonight's episode. Um, yes. Let's see. Get home safe, Jeremiah. I'll see you for less than 24 hours on Wednesday or Tuesday. And uh, let's see. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for watching my critter. And that's about it. That's all I got right now. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> Mike Hill. All right, man. My shouts and plugs. Uh, first off, go to some of my Modesto family. Margie Johnson, I see you out there. Uh, my Modesto mom, Diana Cortez Arianis. I hope uh, everything went well with uh, my sister's uh, baby shower on Saturday. Uh, I have to call you and get the deets on that. Um, also, my girlfriend, Kate, was paying attention to the show as well. As What's her- up, Kate? Yeah. When my- are you going to invite her on to hang out, man? I don't know. We got we to gotta take care of that, man. And, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, You're not looking at me when you're talking. <laughs> well, no, nah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I- I'm trying to look at the rest of my shout-outs, you know. But- <laughs> so I'm best no, no, we'll, we'll have to get her on. We'll have to get her on, man. Yes. Definitely, definitely. I know uh, her nephews usually do karate on Monday night, so oh. they like uh, Tia to go out and watch that. So uh, we'll-, we'll try to get her-, get her away from that maybe on a Monday and have her come down here. And then uh, her sister Marilyn liked uh, the comment, uh, the the post that I made. So Marilyn, thank you for uh, helping me out with everything with the insurance and, and all that. And I'll be seeing you at the end of the month um, for for your kids' birthday parties um, down in in this great city of L.A. And then um, yeah, yeah, that's that's you know always same same you know parents. Thank you for doing what you do. Uh, my sister, hopefully uh, everything went good with my niece this weekend down in L.A. Uh, with her big dance tournament. The so, competition, yeah, I remember Yeah, the competition, that. so I'll have to try to get the details on that. Of course, I uh, mentioned it before the show, but a big uh, congrats and shout-out to my cousin Robbie once again for uh, keeping the namesake alive and having his first, his, his first uh, child, his son. Uh, you know, haven't got around to see my little nephew yet, but uh, but I'll be, I'll be trying to see him uh, sometime this week, little, little baby quattro. And uh, yeah. and then thank you just for uh, for inviting me back to the show. I know it's been a while. Welcome back. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, don't be a stranger, brother. You I know. I know, home, it, man. It, I know, man. It all you know work. Uh, if everything goes well with Sleep Train, it's not going to be the uh, the the early hours like I had with Safeway. That might be more of a you know operation. You know, ten to seven or ten to eight or whatever they want to do. I just told them I'm I'm open and available right now. I need I need the job. So. Um, if I can't make That's it, what she said. Right. Oh. <laughs> so if I can't make it, uh, you'll know why. But, you know, um, to the fans out there that miss me and to you guys, it means a lot to me. And, uh, you know, try to just be here when I can, man. Fit it in with all the other things that I'm trying to accomplish and, and you know, uh, make some. I got it. Got this. The money make it time right now. So there you go. Uh, you know, got to try to allocate my time towards those kind of venues. So I feel it. I'll feel it. Let's go ahead. Jump over from champ to truth. Uh Shout out to the whole crew. Shout out to Slam, Cindy, Champ, and uh, my soul brother, Mike Ills. <laughs> yeah. Even the, even the, I give a shout out to also to Joe Time and uh, Lady Sage. Of uh, course. Cam Beard right now. So shouts out to the whole family. Shouts out to the whole Philippine News. Shouts out to um, Fan TV. And shouts out to uh, Team Donaire, you know, doing their thing in the Philippines, you know, taking, you know, next step from rebounding from that loss. And then uh, shouts out also to uh, Linda and um from miss national asia and and all that and all the people over there and also big shouts out to the houston rockets you know (laughs) (laughs) you're going in red nation h-town you know what i'm saying so uh james harden mvp so 
Yeah. You know what? I will say this. Though. <laughs> I will say this truth back to your boys, Lions. Though, shout out to your boy Ebron though for hooking uh, Stafford and his and his wife oh, yeah, up with, with them those Jordans, Jays. right? That yeah, was like, that was, was sick, man. Was, was those thirteens? Like, yeah, like, the like, tuxedos. It was customs. It was custom yeah. thirteens. So clean, yeah, dude. Look at that, my soul brother right here. He there knows his shoes. So. That's what teammates are for. He's rocking his Jays too right now, right? Yeah, some old and teams. And, uh, some, some, some old teams. <laughs> and Chance rocking some Concords right now. Yeah, so you better it's believe clean. it. So, yeah. you know. they're the lows, yeah. you know. And an <laughs> extra still. flat, extra inch. Right, right on. So yeah, <laughs> right on. Champ, close it out. Yeah, man. First of all, shout out to everyone here, man. You guys have been great, entertaining, fun, easy to talk to. So that's always a plus. Shout out for the food. Oh. Shout out to the Niner Empire, Joe. I know you're listening. He's I on. Appreciate you. Um, shout out to Niner Empire Radio. Mm-hmm. Shout out to my football team, the Richmond Angels. We lost and we melted down <laughs> in pure Richmond style, but we're gonna bounce back. We better. We're better than this. It's just what my people want us to do. Yeah. <laughs> and um, man, just everything's good, man. I-, I look forward to doing it again. It was fun. Awesome. And I miss National Asia. If you're listening. He's like, call me. You could do worse, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. This guy. I'll go ahead and close out the shouts and plugs. I'd like to thank my entire crew. Truth, we're going to have to have Miss Asia on. You're responsible for that connect. <laughs> Mike Hill, thank you once again for being able to make it on your tough schedule. I know you're yeah. very busy. Yeah, no problem. And always fitted and well-suited. Thank you. Thank Ca- you. Captain Fantastic, as always, cerebral, <laughs> as the top of the line as you can <laughs> thank be. You. The champ. Yeah, Boy, yeah. You are incredible. Oh, we even you. we didn't even freak, chat for a reason. This, I love talking about me. This is like a freaking trilogy. This is like the first part of the movie with you. <laughs> we, we got just two more parts. Surface. Exactly. Yeah. We, we didn't even go into half the shit that we were No, we talk- really didn't. You know, we didn't he, talk about Niner Empire. <laughs> we didn't. And you know, I, there's still more music adventures, there's still more sports adventures. So, I'm going to say happy right, to come back. I'm saying it right here in front of all the viewers and listeners out there. We're going to put you in consistent rotation as co-host so you can continue to share Man, these stories. It's all good. Okay. So you won't be on the hot seat. You'll just be kicking it back and relaxed and just say, uh, dialing I love, in. I love talking about myself. <laughs> there <laughs> you my, go. It's my second favorite pastime next to thinking about Margot Robbie or whatever. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Explode. Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'd like to thank everyone that's in the chat room interacting with us. Appreciate all the interaction, all the anonymous viewers out there. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Go to TVEPN.com for all the handle information. All right, guys, that does it for this episode. Close it out with a little tracks. Okay. For myself yeah. here. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. I was there.